Hello there, guys and gals. The Welsh Hunter here, back with yet another 100% achievement trophy guide, and this time we are getting it all in Sherlock Holmes: The Awakened. This excellent adventure game was developed and published by Frogwares, who somehow, even with all the stuff going on in the Ukraine right now, managed to release this magnificent game. So, all claps and props to them. It's also available for £39.99 in the UK and US, so hopefully a sale may come around soon, or cheeky game pass. Wink, wink. Uh, so if you've played previous Frogwares games, Call of Cthulhu and Sinking City, you'll be very familiar with this. It's basically a Sherlock and Lovecraft crossover. The one we didn't expect, but the one we needed. Uh, now, Sherlock Holmes basically has to investigate a number of disappearances, but it all ties back to weirdos worshipping a non-existent being, i.e. Cthulhu this time. Uh, this is the first time Shul uh, Sherlock. Sherlock is truly afraid and opens up the story on how S and J truly became the world's best detectives. Now, achievements-wise, the list is rather easy. There's no collectibles or anything like that. It's pretty much just for finishing each chapter, of which there are eight, and a few miscellaneous ones sprinkled in between each chapter as well. Manual save comes in handy if you need it. Otherwise, this is going to take us around three to three and a half hours to complete. So with that being said, then, let's do it, as always. So, uh, just a few things then to notice then, we can pretty much skip any cutscene with the A button, we can also slam through the dialogue, which we will be doing for the majority of this game, again, just smashing the A button, um, unless of course you are really invested in the story, then, you know, be my guest, chicken breast. Dr. Watson, would you cut? My apologies, Mr. Holmes. Are those my surgical? I ran out of tax in the map. Was that my sub? Plainly not. Fu hmm. I see. Is that? They are the key. Medically speaking, I often find that your papers are here on the letters. So let's crack on with it then. So, left stick to walk around, of course. We're going to press A to interact with this table immediately. Now, what we'll be doing for the, uh, throughout a lot of this game is we can press and hold the A button when you see your reticle there change to green. If it's white, it means there's nothing there, and it'll obviously always tell you at the top of the screen how many there is that we need to collect. So the first one was the newspaper, the second one here is the book, make sure to interact with that twice, and then a letter there on the right hand side. So sometimes you'll have to, like you can see, you'll have to turn things around to press the A button, or you've got to press and hold the A button. It's all, all very simple stuff. Um, the right trigger uh, lets Sherlock Holmes jog ever so lightly. Um, but yeah, so right trigger to sprint. The left bumper you can use uh, to have a look at all the hot spots that are around. Uh, but we can uh, just walk down the steps first. And as you can see, you can also press the right bumper, which will get in your... Um, the right bumper... Yeah, it's like your detective, your extra detective stuff. Uh, but have a look at the bin when we get outside anyway. And we're going to interact with this thing, which is just a bone. Just a bone. It is a bone of the ur. Cactus spine. Well, same thing. And then what you can do is just if we uh, look down. Now, as you can see on the bottom, it'll tell you to... You can move with the left stick. You can rotate with the right stick. Um, and yeah, it's pretty much easy, obviously, the A button to use it. Now, as you can see, uh, now what we're going to do is just go straight across to the old paper boy right here. Ah, no worries, mate. Why aren't you going yourself, mate? Uh, just joking. Um, now, usually with dialogue, you can pretty much just slam through all of the dialogue. None of it matters, um, if at all, in all fairness. So you can literally just get through each dialogue piece with no worries. If you pick one that's different, it literally doesn't matter. It doesn't, um, it doesn't void any achievements, doesn't make it the endings or anything any different. Did you see what he nah, not really. I ducked down. Can you describe? He was carried. Never heard of looks can. Do Which way did he go? Not sure. All right. Thanks, Mr. Holmes. Now, every time you speak to people, as you can see in the sort of bottom left-hand corner there, you get um, uh, sort of detective points. Um, they're not for anything in particular. It's literally just for unlocking um, stuff for your wardrobe. That's it. So you literally don't have to worry about that. Once you press the start button here, if you go, if you press the left bumper, you will go into this 
um, sort of detective-y thing. Uh, so it's just where all the evidence is. So we're going to say book from Barnes. Let's press the A button from book from Barnes and then all the little, uh, so that it's all linked up. Then you can press the right trigger to go uh, basically into your inventory and um, into your sort of evidence things. So again, once you press start left bumper, you'll go, this is like the evidence thing where you sort of clue and tie all the evidence together. So, like I said, first one, once you go in here, make sure you press the A button there on the book from Barnes, and obviously that'll go up well. Um, that'll light up the blue way. Right trigger, and then pick Newsboy's Testimony, and then that will go, Barnes, the local bull seller. B <laughs> bull seller? I mean, bull schnizzer. No, uh, the local bookkeeper. Um, so once that one is done, we can press the B button a couple of times, and we can head out of here. So two evidence updated, you can see. Um, so we're going to head to the left past this horse and carriage. Uh, but yeah, so don't worry about the numbers. If your numbers are different to mine, literally do not worry about it. It is literally just for updating and upgrading things, which we don't need for the game. So heading into Barnes Bookshop here, we're going to speak to the man himself, which is not that bro. It's this bra. In quite dashing. Now, a lot of the times we're going to be observing people as well. So uh, press and hold the A button on certain features of their face. And then we can choose something at the end of it. So again, use the right stick to rotate, the left stick to move. So have a look at his head, then his uh, finger, and then have a look at his, uh, well, his crotch goblet. And then <laughs> just take a look at his knee. It ain't that far down, is it? God damn, I hope so. Maybe that's why he leans heavily on his right leg. That's what we all do, huh, guys? Yeah. Right, have a look at his shoes. And then you can just accept that. Now you can choose something... Uh, which will either be a black male victim or workaholic. It's the white one, of course, so we're going to choose workaholic. And then just press the A button a couple of times there to finish. So remember, every time that you are making a decision, it is the um, letters, it is the words in white. Because for some reason, that bit really confused me for whatever particular reason uh, throughout the game. Uh, but yes, workaholic and then old cutscene. Some you can skip, some you can't. So, you know. Come now, Mr. Barr. Really deep in the well, help yourself to any book, just Barnes doesn't seem like himself. So now we're going to do an investigation scene for the first time. So head to the right and have a look at the ladder, and you'll be able to see, oh, yes, this is pretty broken because that's how everyone in London speaks, isn't it? When they do speak and they're not miserable, especially on the trains and stuff. I'm <laughs> just joking. Right over to the front, have a look at this pile of books here. Two things to look at the first one is this big, massive book. Cryptanalysis, I'm cryptography in Egypt. Have a look at the newspaper, hold the uh, A button again, and that'll be the two. Now, you will back out automatically, so don't worry about pressing B or anything like that. Head over to the window, and have a look, press the A button, and then have a look at the big pile of books. Now, of course, you'll know when you'll be able to interact with stuff. If you either press the left bumper, the small circle will come up as orange, or you'll just be able to see something that is orange anyway. Uh, um, a small circle. So having a look outside, the flowers and the books, that will be all three done. So eventually we will back out. There we go. And then what we can do then, we can just turn around and get the hell out of here, man. For the time being. Going straight across the road and we are going to have a little chat with old... This lady in a minute, but have a look at the flowers first. So pick up these flowers. Oh, smell the roses. Why not, bro? We need some. Oh, God, that's awkward now. Yeesh. Uh, interact with those flowers and then the cactus pot. So what you need to do is turn the cactus pot until you see the crack. There it is. So, um, yep. Yeah. God bless the queen indeed. Better than old uh, sausage fingers. The sausage finger king right now, huh? Although, to be, to be fair, I bet uh, the new queen, uh, Camilla or whatever her name is, oh, I bet she's happy with her big sausage finger, isn't she? Right, so we're observing <coughs> Lady. Uh, having a look at her little moustache and beard she's got going on. And then have a look at her eyeballs. Distant look. Damn, yeah, she does look off a nut, doesn't she? Have a look at the buttons. Oh, very, very posh for work. Uh, and then have a look at her right boobicle. I, I mean the morning bruchicle. That's what I meant, sorry. Have a look down, all the way down, and apparently Sherlock's got a foot fetish or something as well. We're just uh, checking out the old boots right there. Right, make sure to choose the top. Well, still grieving. 
make sure to choose still grieving because sometimes maybe in your game um the answers are always going to be the same but they c could be in different um locations so still grieving could be on the bottom for you um so i won't say choose the top option or bottom option i'll tell you which ones exactly to pick um anyway we're going to provide some evidence so the first evidence we are going to uh, put is uh, cactus in a cracked pot. Let's make sure to put cactus in a cracked pot, and then she'd be like, "Ah, oh, <laughs> you son of a!" Di and then uh, next one that we're going to pick is going to be the dead flowers on display. Do they mean anything to you? Mean anything how? Why do you think they're there? Are you suggesting? It seems like. Oh. And lastly, then, we are going to do the character portrait of Mr. Barnes. Excellent. No, wait, never mind, wrong one. Of course. A look? Yes. He, actually, we, I often see him staring through. Right, so what we're going to do then is we will uh, press the start. We're going to go uh, press left bumper there to go back into our evidence thingy. And then we're going to go down to... Why is Barnes, <laughs> Mr. Barnes, acting so strangely? So, go into your documents and testimonies. And then we are going to choose Mrs. Fleming on Barnes. So, make sure that one is all linked up. Mrs. Fleming on Barnes. Then, Mr. Barnes. No, in fact, we go in uh, to the observation. Sorry, so right trigger. Then, dead flowers on display. So, apologies about that one. Then, go to your items and go to cactus in a cracked Pot. So cactus in a crack pot. That'll put everything together, and then we'll be all like, "All right, Mr. Barnes is in love with Mrs. Smithers." All right. Right. So that makes sense. You can read that if you wish, but we're just going to press the B button a couple of times to back out and go straight ahead into the. Yes, we have been chasing shadows. Mr. Barnes is just a perv man. So uh, go all the way to the left when we get into Mr. Barnes' bookshop. Interact with the door. Uh, any dialogue option you can pick here doesn't matter. You ordered a cactus from the plant catalog. You place flowers in. I couldn't read this morning's. I know you dropped a ca Barnes. It's Dr. Watts. Uh. It was quite an awkward package. Heavy too. And when I got to your door, I needed that paper. To your clumsiness carrying the post. Oh, I. So to get our first achievement here, make sure that you choose I know what to do. So this dialogue option is important. So choose I know what to do, and we are going to get our first achievement of the game. Uh, which is read between the lines, and that's basically helping Mr. Barnes with his love life, even though it doesn't actually say what happens. Um, we just tell him to go for it, which we could have just done without the need for the last 10 minutes or so. But there we go. All done. First achievements out of the way, so now we can well, crack on with the real stuff, I suppose. So out we go, out of Mr. Burns' Barnes's. There was supposed to be another burglary. Hmm. Something you wish to... S no. Well, I see things... Yes. So it seems... Which brings us back to my news from truth. Indeed. I said I knew just Oh. Yes. I know it's not the most. It's brilliant. Oh, good. Hmm. Yes, rather, Dr. Watson. Thank you very much, sir. Love your mustache, by the way. Right. Heading back down the street then. And again, we're just going to go for a nice little jog. Oh, thank you. Uh, head into the open gates here on the right to Stenwick's Manor and have another little conversation again. For the most part, we're just going to smash through all of the dialogue options. This is my con- At last, a professional. Sergeant Ruffles. Have there been other dis- Of course, here and there. Why has the police- to We investigate murders, that said. If we find him now, I must be- <laughs> Captain, Ah, yes. Quite right. Tell me about Kim here. He's foreign. He doesn't speak a whit of English. When did you last... Kimmy here, Norm... May I see... His shack is in the garden. Did you... Of course. Is there any reason Kim... I should think not. He... 
did Kimma hear me? Heavens, no. Still, he... No. I take it this is... Should he cause any... All right, Captain. I think I have enough to get started. Go ahead. And now we're coming out to our big first investigation. Sherlock wanted a big boy, and he's got a big boy. So, um, I mean, invest big investigation, that's what I meant, sorry. So heading to the left and all the way back into the back, into the back of the Garden of the Back. Uh, have a look at this statue, and we will interact with this. And first of all, we're going to look at the stain right here. So again, obviously hold the A button to interact with that, and then the boot print on the floor. And then if we press the right bumper to go into, I don't know, is it like detective mode or whatever it is? There we go. So we go into detective mode, and then what will happen is it'll automatically just appear. So you don't have to press anything, and then eventually the game will realize, and it'll all be good. There we else. Yells. So, uh, that one's done. I can press the right bumper to get out of detection mode. We'll just call it that. Oh, it's uh, imagination. Okay, yeah, that imagination. Same things, right. So, uh, heading to the gate here, interact with this. You'll just have a look at the lock. Quite unusual. Should be bent to the right. Okay, another new thing that we're going to uh, have a look at. Sometimes, if you've checked everything over and you don't know um, where to go next, press start, and you can see an un a lock with an unusual keyhole. Press the X button to pin this, and then the evidence will appear. So for this time, it's appearing in the shed. So then we can press the right bumper here and have a look at both of these. So yes, if you are doing some of these on your own and you've scoured absolutely everywhere and you don't know what to do, sometimes you actually have to pin the evidence uh, to your sort of uh, to the main screen or whatever, and then some more evidence will appear. That's mad, isn't it? So after that, uh, now we can bin it off if you want. So you can press start and then press the X button to uh, unpin the evidence. Have a look at this uh, fabric on the floor. To the right then, have a look at the uh, boxes. And that'll be uh, all good for those two. Once this is done, we can obviously, it'll obviously back out for us. And then if we head to the right, you can have a look here at the box. Um, well, it's a, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's somebody's face print. The sack of grain. Somebody's face being in there, mate. And then just to the uh, middle of the room there, it's a spyglass. So pick it up. Job done. And then from here, what we could do is turn to the left. Well, I'm just going to unpin this first. Um, so it, whatever the first one is, just press the X button twice there, and that will just unpin it so it's not in the way. Then we can go into this little side room here on the left-hand side. And, well, you can interact with the both of them. Top one doesn't matter, but it's this bottom one that we need. It's a nice, uh, cheeky little mutton shop. That would have looked delicious, I suppose. Then interact with this ball thing and uh, eventually rotate it. There's a little... Well, there's something there. Something there. And then finally interact with the big ash pile that's just chilling off. So, look behind you, to the left on the shelf, there is an item that we're going to have a look at here, this... Uh, yeah, Maori nose flute, I knew exactly what that was, right? So, uh, interact with that, then the table on the right hand side. Now, a lot of the times, and then we can basically head out now, um, and after we look out the window... Yes, it's a Maori water spirit, I knew that as well, I'm so clever after someone tells me what it is. Um, now, a lot of the times it seems like I'm probably just picking up and looking at absolutely everything but a lot of this is actually necessary to complete said investigation so if you were just wondering why but just to the right is another piece of fabric so you'll have to find the point of it there it is well it was somewhere um but the cloth in the chimney <clears throat> which is obviously a bit sus right it is a bit sus right right head all the way back to the um wiener guy at the front door and have a little conversation And by the conversation, I mean we're going to provide some evidence. Now, the first one is going to be clothes made of Hessian. And then the second one is going to be um, the spyglass. Sorry. So it's going to be the spyglass. 
Is this spyglass? I don't recognize it. Could it be Kimmer here? I doubt it. And thirdly, yes, it's going to be a lock with an unusual keyhole. Now, if you do end up accidentally clicking one wrong, or you get one of these wrong, it's generally fine, because you'll just go, oh, uh, never mind. Uh, chewing tobacco remains as well. Make sure to pick. Uh, but again, if you get one wrong, you'll go, what are you talking about? And then you can just pick another one anyway, so don't worry about that. And fifthly, footprints in Captain Stenwick's garden. Kimmy here. <laughs> Not that it matters. Nice bit of evidence uh, gathering right there. So, we're going to be coming up to our first imagination mode thing. Um, imagination thing. Um, in just a moment. So what we can do here is head uh, basically back to the middle, just past the fountain there. And then if we have a look on the ground, again, go into right bumper mode. And just have a look at the circle there. Parallel tracks. Wheels. Holy crap. Now, this is another thing where we have to actually pin the evidence for the next ev uh, bit of evidence to appear. So, uh, what we can do is go into the start and then pin the trail in Captain Steinvik's garden. So again, press the X button when you're on that. The trail in Captain Steinvik's garden. And then, whoa, just like magic, there's the next one. Appears out of nowhere. So, right bumper it and have a look at it. Moldy, broken, not used recently. Well, that sounds very much like me, to be honest, uh, in a lot of ways. Um, <laughs> but we do have, as you can see, we've got four out of five now on the imaginations there. And the last one's going to be just over by the shed. Often used, parallel tracks, grass doesn't grow here, and to the left of it is a pile of logs. And that should be all five complete. <clears throat> now, as you can see with the, the smaller circle ones... At the top, and we'll uh, I'll get to that in just a moment. Um, so basically, um, you can go over these imagination nodes. Now there are three different scenarios. So we press the X button, and you actually have to pick the correct one. If you get one wrong, again it doesn't matter. You can just go and correct it. Um, but the first one is him going to be um, this imagine uh, thing using a spyglass. So that's the first one. Um, what we're doing now is just going into the shed. And again, press the X button to click it open. And it should be, this is what it should be, the unknown assailant dragging Kimiha. Go into this next part. And then what it is, is going to be the unknown guy outside with um, a candle or something in his hand. Or, or him stuffing the chimney in the cloth in the chimney. Outside next to the gate is going to be him trying to open up the gate, like so. And lastly... Is going to be, nah, nah, he's obviously going to be carrying, and again, sometimes it, it'll start on the right one, sometimes it'll start on the wrong one, but that it will be the f final one, press and hold the Y button to validate, and it should come up with a cutscene. Again, if it doesn't, and one of them's wrong, just go back and, um, yeah, just correct it. You, you literally never get penalised. The only thing that you sort of get penalised for is you just get less points for the sort of upgrade thing later on. So, in terms of achievements and everything, it doesn't make a difference if you do get it wrong. The intruder fell on the sack and dropped his spyglass. In order to transport the servant, he had to use the cart. The final challenge was opening the garden door. Luckily for our intruder, Kimmer here had the key in his shack. Remarkable. It makes total sense. Of course it makes sense, Watson. I am the brilliant Sherlock Holmes. Right, go back to uh, Captain Steinvik and Balsen. And then, of course, just go through all the conversation. Doesn't matter again which dialogue options you pick or not. I found the... Cut to the chain. I fear... And your... You said that you checked now. I expect... I won't keep you when you're... Now, hold on. I only arrived a moment ago. Every second you draw... I'm not interested in the how. Uh, the point is, Cap... Well, then you should... And in the meantime... When I get back, I'm going to shave those sideburns off you. So, uh, but that's for another story later on. So now what he's actually done is give us the key, so we can actually get out of the garden, and now we can go through. We can actually just head straight through. There we go, press the A button there, jump straight through, job done. 
Let's take a little look now. The abductor's trail. So pin the abductor's trail. And then what we'll see on this box is a little weird dolly thing. Of course, they're the ones that creepily watch you in the night and then come alive and try to kill you, just like Chucky. And then if you have a look on this little cart right here, we've got, we're just going to interact with the rope and then the hay. Or the little pouch on the ground. And then the rope is exactly what I meant to say. Roy Solsbler. Sounds like a posh steak. A strange substance. Well, it's odorless, but from the way it absorbs water, I'd say saltpeter. Then we're in agreement. Well done. Sturdy rope, professionally tied in a Portuguese bowline. This knot is often used by sailors to create wheels picked up grass along the way. Kimahir's cart, I gather. And of course, interacting with the uh, pouch, rope, and the hay is exactly what I meant. So have a look at this ground. Um, have a look at the ground here, and you're going to see uh, a delicious pile of uh, yummy protein-infused horse crap. And then interact with some cigarette butts. Someone stood here for hours. There was a cab waiting here. Our abductor slipped in, and then off into the night. Right, so let's go into our little evidence locker, tie together type thing. So, first one, what we are going to do then, the two on the left are of course already done. So what we're going to do is have a look at what are the notice noticeable features of the abduction. <clears throat> Excuse me. So first of all, we are going to interact with Spyglass. And then we're going to go ahead and interact with the Sailor's Knot there at the bottom. And then if we go into Observations by pressing the right trigger, we are going to go with the trail, uh, no, not the trail, sorry, the boot prints in Captain Steinfix garden. And that'll come up with the good things. Kimmy Healy, Kimmy Healy was kidnapped. And the abductor is a sailor. Job done. Uh, so now we're going to go to where does Ka K Kami, Kimmy, Kimmy has trail lead. Sorry. And again, what we're going to pick is the strand. September 28th, 1882. And then we are then going to go with Wallet with Salt Peter. And then if we go into our observations again with the right trigger, we're going to go with Abductor is a Sailor. Ah, oh, mate, not Landan. I suppose we're already in Landan. Are we in Landan? Well, we're close to Landan. Right, so, that's where we're off, let's go, go to the left, interact with the horse and cart driver, and this will be the end of chapter one. Also, what I would like to um, ask any sort of Americans, Canadians, and everyone else around the world, you know, Sherlock's accent, you know, well, quaint, oh, rather over here, do you actually find that accent appealing, or do you think it just sounds hilarious, because it sounds hilarious, doesn't it? Anyway, on to chapter two. Mr. Holmes, what a compelling mystery. Huh. One... Stop! I did not take you for the super... One imagines a physician. Perhaps. My time abroad was... difficult. He pressed a rosary into my hand. After that, the man's words came to me. Yes. To whom I'm grateful. I'm sure you... To each his own, Dr. Watt. Do it. We must press on, cat or no cat. So, as you can see in the top left there, uh, Sherlock can ask any bystanders about any pieces of evidence as well. Um, it doesn't really matter if you do or if you don't. Um, that's just the... because, again, everything's the same. You don't have to ask any specific people or anything. But anyway, heading into the pub and having a look at this first missing person posters. This is for the high-profile achievement. So make sure to interact with that missing person's poster first. And then we can interact with old Baliadia. We should soon see, mate. Uh, so, we need help finding a man. So, pretty much uh, anything else in yellow, which is the most important one. And we are going to observe her as well. Uh, so, just have a look at her um, chin. Right there, a bit, bit pale. Pretty much like the majority of the UK. Have a look at her right boob. I mean, her vomit stain. Now, again, normally, if anyone else is staring at you for this long, you'd be like, uh, Excuse me, bro, what the hell are you doing? Have a look at her belly, and then go down to the right, and then have a look at her pocket. 
a little too tight. Oh, all right, she's had a big lunch then. Uh, no, she is, she's trying to hide her pregnancy. So make sure to choose the option there, tries hiding her pregnancy. Your clothes are already tight, and soon they won't fit at all. I... Uh, in a manner of speak. He's not. He merely has the ego of... I... I'm fine, thank you. I would rather... I heard tell of a recent... Ah, yes. Where precisely... The ship sank. So, after all that lovely talk about big lunches and pregnancies, go to provide evidence and... Choose missing persons poster. What do you know about this poster. A foreign woman asked. Any clues as to her? None. It was hard to understand. And next up, then, make sure to choose Salisbury's stakes calling card. Roy Salisbury. So we'll press start, and we're going to pin Salisbury's calling card. Now, again, sometimes this may be in a random order. That's why I'm telling you which ones to pick. So pin Salisbury's calling calling card. It reads. Roy Salisbury, mate. Land gang. Head out the door on the right and smash straight through. Now, again, if you want to interact and talk with some people, again, all it does is just gives you a couple of extra points for the upgrade thing. Um, so, yeah, nothing else really changes. So if you don't talk to anyone, it does not matter. So head straight. Continue heading straight and down this sort of narrow path here. Uh, ignoring this new case, we don't need to do this. Head to the right and in through this double shed. Double shed, it's just a regular shed. Um, so you can go ahead and speak to this young lad, right? Yeah, uh, just smash through all the dialogue as per. Emma, where did you last see Gid? He Do you still have Gid? How would you describe the he will scare? Yes, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Wow, that sounds uh, creepy. That's an arrestable offence. Uh, have a look at the shrine to the left of him, and then what we're going to do is only two things to grab. The first one is this um, pendant. Uh, yep, again, obviously knew that one. And for the high-profile achievement, we're going to have a look at the picture on the right, and that is that is Girvesh. Um, now, again, you can do the case, which involves Girvesh. But we're not going to bother, so I do apologise, mate, but uh, Gervesh is going to be missing for a little while longer, anyway. Until maybe Frogwares releases some DLC where we have to complete all the side quests or something. Anyway, heading out, the achievement's unlocked, head to the left, now head to the right. And then go straight up, straight through. And then once again, straight through... Nice hat, by the way. Incre Sherlock is he's the only one who can smash this one out. Um, go to the left now. Again, ignoring the new case that's just appeared. Uh, now, again, there may be some people here to speak to if you want. I do actually end up speaking to... Uh, now we're at Pier 3. We're going to be fast travelling soon, but I do end up speaking. There, there may be a person here. I do end up just heading down here and speaking to uh, one dude. There he is. He literally just came out of bloody nowhere. Oh, I know why, because that's John Watson. <laughs> that's why. That's why he came out. No, he's following me. Um, so I do end up just speaking to this guy. And then what happens is... Uh, he'll just say... You know, a little bit of evidence gets provided. So, um, yeah. yeah. It's, it's worth doing if you can, but I don't think it makes too much of a difference. So we go on the upper level, and now we can go ahead and speak to Salisbury himself. This is the uh, big steak man himself. And that is, uh, that's a hell of a haircut, that one. Shave it off, mate, shave it off. Not again. Now what makes you think I would... You are the fourth person to ask the... You say... Hmm. She has... And this woman... No. Now where was I? So, time to stare at a man until he gets really freaked out. So have a look at his hand. He's got some ink stains, just chilling. Have a look at his hat. And he's five foot, he's five, five tall. Not very impressive. No offense. Uh, have a look at the button of the pocket watch. I'm just joking. Five, five is mighty sexually cool. Uh, no muscle tone at all. Pretty average. Uh, and make sure to choose corrupt officer. 
So make sure to choose the option there, Corrupt Officer. Now, obviously, if you hadn't noticed, um, and if you were sort of doing this on your own again, you'd just have to look out for little green spots that are appearing on the body. That is to, uh, to find what would be next on the observation list. Right. Make sure to go in to choose evidence, and we're going to choose Salisbury's calling card once again. Like at a crime scene near Baker's. I, no. Someone used him. Uh, a quick word of warning, if you're trying to hide your identity, don't be surprised when someone pulls out the card with your name on it. Next up then is Nepali Boy's testimony. <laughs> I told that you hired, his brother also said you Tell that him to stop me. Alright, so once the calling with, or the talk with Salisbury, Salisbury Steak has been done, what we're going to do is go into the start menu, go to the right by pressing the right bumper to go onto your map, and we can actually uh, go to the the mermaid bar once again. So uh, choose the mer the mermaid car the mermaid bar. Press and hold the A button. Sorry, I was getting very slowly on myself right there. And we're going to go ahead and speak to the barman again. Again, uh, smashing through all dialogue options until we can provide some evidence. I shudder to ask. He likely signed on with hmm. my advice. Okay, we can't provide evidence yet, but we are going to go into our start menu, left bumper, and we're going to do these two. Who abducted, or where, who abducted, it doesn't matter which one you really do first, we're going to go with who abducted Kimiha. And the first thing that we are going to pick is the, uh, if we, so if we go into our observations, and we're going to go to uh, character portrait Roy Salisbury. So make sure to go to character portrait there, Roy Salisbury, and that'll be the first one. And then the second one, if we press the right trigger to go over again. There you go, to documents and testimonies. We're going to go to Barmay's testimony. And then Roy Salisbury's testimony. Uh, Nepali boy's testimony. Sorry, so yeah, Nepali boy's testimony, Barmay's testimony, and Roy Salisbury's testimony. So all four of them should be correct. Dirty Summers is the abductor. Oh man, not that dirty. Couldn't have been clean Summers at least. No? Ah well. Right, so back and out of there then, we can head back outside. And we're going to go back onto the map and go to Pier 3 in the top left hand corner. So that's where we're off next. Off to Pier 3, we're actually going to go ahead and speak to Roy Salisbury and pre present him the evidence that we know that he is more than just a steak with a hat on. Uh, a gorping at your mama, boy. Uh, now nah, we're going to confront him, <clears throat> and again we've got all the evidence that we need. So first piece of evidence then is going to be uh, Kimmy has abductor. Now I actually got this first one wrong, but um, again if you get it wrong, as you can see, you say sorry you lost me there, and you can just go again. So it's all good. Uh, so it's all good. If you get it wrong, you literally don't get punished at all in this game, which is nay. So. Kimiha's abductor is the first one that we're going to go for. A man named Dirty Summers was involved in some... What? Really? And of course, you know, when you get it right, when the, you get the tick in the top right hand, uh, top left hand corner of the book there, then choose Salisbury's calling card. Your calling card was found at the... <laughs> and finally, choose character portrait Roy Salisbury Steak. And then present final evidence, press A to accept. Job done. Now he's going to be like... Oh, I might keep your head down. I'll give you a free, uh, free steak off my buns. Yes, Mr. Yes, and you did not tell. Me. I do not recall. What else can you? He is a regular at the Cursed Mermaid. Goes there with his. What for? I don't know. Thank you, Mr. Crapped Officer. Of which there are none, of course, these days. <laughs> right, go to back to the Mermaid Bar now. Head back in, and then we're going to do the same with the barmaid. So straight up, and we're going to do some confronting. Why do I have the feeling that you... I have nothing more to... So, first bit is going to be Kimiha's abductor once again. So Kimi Raha Kinen. Enough. I have... I'm not surprised. Next up will be Roy Salisbury's testimony. A customs officer, Roy Salisbury. All I know is his dream. And finally, it's going to be the character portrait of the barmaid. We know. We, we ams, ams, Sherlock Holmes, niz, niz. Only with a good time, baby. Many people are missing. 
and the main... One word to Scotland Yard. Now, spare yourself. Okay, okay. Summers, he paid me cash, so I... Oh, and by the way, by a good time, I mean uh, watching Netflix and eating KFC. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's my idea of a real good time. Anyway, head into the room to the left now. And again, we're going to have a little, um, just a little looky-loo around. So first thing is going to be the chalkboard. Then it's going to be the coins just next to the mug right here as well. Five shillings. Five shillings. Well, it's more than I got right now. Then on the right, just past the plate, sort of in the middle there, it is an invoice. And then press the right bumper, have a look at the uh, circle thing, the crack thing, whatever that is, and that's job done. That's four out of four. Strange symbols. I don't recognise them. Right, the investigation scene is complete, so now let's get out of here. I mean, you could have uh, at least taken some of the free food that was just left, but there we go. So now we can provide more evidence then to the barmaid. And the first thing that we're going to do is the hiring notice. What did you see of Summer's work? It was like the whole... Beyond that, there's not... And this last... Several weeks, I wager. And in fact, that's the only one we're doing. So now we're going to go back into our evidence tie-up thingy. So start obviously to the left, and now we're going to choose where is Kimiha. And the first thing that we're going to choose is the hiring notice. So if you go to observations, bottom left corner is hiring notice. And then what we could do is go to documents and testimonies, go to invoice for sale cloth, and then up one to Roy Salisbury's testimony. And that'll smash all three together. Your balls will light up gold. Job done. So when this bit is done then, what we can actually do now is just go into our map and we're just going to go ahead and fast travel to Pier 3. Uh, for some reason I decided to go outside and then run quite a bit before realising. So go into your map and fast travel to Pier 3 anyway. Right, so push past Watson. His green, you know, Jim Carrey mask costume isn't fooling anyone. Head to the right, and off we go up the steps. And then from here, we're going to go into the building, get out of the Rhine, mate. So we're basically just heading back now to the big warehouse 12. So effectively, we're just going all the way straight. And there we go then, when we get to the right here, just showing you that this is Warehouse 12, there she blows. So what we need to do then, we're going to get another achievement here called Big Breakthrough for finding out how the intruder got into the warehouse. So go to uh, the back of the warehouse, and then to the right now is the fence, so we can interact with that one. Go back to the front and actually interact with and get into said warehouse itself. And this is our first out of four locking picks. Now, you can skip it, but it will you will miss an achievement. So you have to do these ones, which is fine. So what you need to do then is press the left trigger, and that will um, go out. And then what you're going to see is like uh, a little, little, well, it's a pick lock. So what you have to do with the right stick is move up, uh, basically adjust in. So with the first one, move your right stick up three times. The second one, put it up four times. So then go over to the left once and then put this one up four times. And then the last one, put it up two times. Then press right trigger to put it back inside the lock. And then that should work perfectly. So again, for the first one, it is three times. The second one is four times. And the third one is two times. So it should be looking like that. Once that's done, put again, right trigger it in. And then that will open up the door. Job done. So again, make sure not to... There's only four in the game. Um, but do not skip any of those because you will miss the achievement. Uh, called Lock, Stock and Barrel. So when we're in anyway, have a look to the left. And then we're going to interact with this wall. Interact with uh, the marks on the wall. And if we put ourselves up, have a look at the scratches as well. The scratches are fresh, left by something metallic. Oh, 
There are a couple of marks on this end. Ta-da! There we go. We've uh, we found out how they got in. Quite easy, actually. So what we're going to do now is just go uh, basically back to the beginning here. Have a look at this box. Uh, have a look at the left-hand side of the sheet. A uh, bit of uh, delicious mould chilling out. And then on the right-hand side, there is a little torn. There's a little tear. A little torn. A little tear in the cloth. Again, it probably seems pointless, but it all makes sense, and you have to basically do it for the story anyway. So, heading upstairs, and then what we're going to do is interact with this mechanism right here. And then again, what you can see, if you interact with both parts, you're going to see that one cog be missing. Fit for a crank. Right, hey, old chap, let's head back downstairs. And then if we head to the right... All the way down to the opposite side, we can open up this box and interact with the uh, little thing. So as you can see, I, I've got a new reward. If you don't have it yet, or you can get one later, that's fine. It's literally just clothes and other stuff, which is all cool. So pop the crank in the mechanism anyway. Ah, oh, hello. Now we can head all the way back downstairs. Because what's going to be like, Hey, Helms, come and see this old chap. No, I'm not on about my sausage either. Yum, 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 yum. So, hidden passage down, and now we cannot return after leaving, so make sure we've done everything that we can, which is the high-profile achievement, a big breakthrough, which you should have done, um, so now we can just crack along with it. So, um, we're going to crack on, and now this is where the old Cthulhu-y, Frogways, um, really enjoyable Lovecraft stuff starts kicking into it, um, which again is pretty incredible for the crossover. The crossover I don't think anybody expected. But it's awesome. What? What is this place? Well, I guess we'll soon find out. So what we need to do then is go ahead and interact with this console thing uh, directly in front of us. Something is missing. I don't like strangely cold. If it was strangely warm, I wouldn't mind staying. Uh, so what we can do now is actually just um, jump off. Just just jump off the edge. But it's all good, because we just landed on another platform, luckily. Uh, so, interact with this console in front of us, and we've got uh, what effectively is a key. <laughs> I know something else that's icy cold and pulsating. Um, <laughs> my nips. On a very cold day. Nothing else, though. Nothing else. Uh, nothing else works. So, what you can do now is... These are effectively like the small little puzzles. So, we interact with this key. We'll pop the key in. So, you'll have to interact with it twice. Now, do not run. Make sure that you are walking. If you run, the door will close. If the door closes, you can just press the button again. But just make sure to walk. Otherwise, the door, as I said, will close. Now, I am somewhere... So, hands up whoever wants to go through in a big monster's mouth. So, on the right-hand side, hands up. Do you want to go through a big monster's mouth? Yeah, screw it, let's go. Ah, ooh, it tickles. Hey, get your, get your tooth out of there, man. That's not for, that's not for eating. Oh, Jesus. God damn. Right, well, after this bit, head to the left and then up the steps. Again, there's nothing that can kill you in these sections. If you do fail anything, you can just start from the very beginning. So the checkpoints in this game are very, very generous. So head up to the left now, and then up the steps again. Interact with this um, uh, lever on the floor, and you could see that a path had just appeared there. Uh, so now we need to head to the opposite side and interact with another path. But it is invisible. Uh, so heading down... And then what you'll need to do is turn around, you see the eye, press right bumper to go into that uh, Im imagination mode or whatever it is. And then just walk backwards until we get through the door. There we go. Oh man, my head's spinning too. Now we need to grab two keys. So head to the door behind you. And again, what you'll need to do is turn around, into, um, go into imagination mode, and walk backwards through the door again. Stench. Now you are in McDonald's's back room here uh, with all the uh, fishy, smelly, disgusting burgers. 
which actually tastes bloody lovely. So, uh, <laughs> just joking, McDonald's. I love you, really. Anyway, we've grabbed the one icy key. Now we can just head out, head to the right, and go through the next door to the right. And once again, it's another puzzle. All you got to do is press right bumper and then walk straight. Oh, that's just true. And now we're in um, one of your most hated restaurants, whichever that may be, where, where they keep all of the staff members who refuse to work on the day off. Uh, so pick up the <laughs> icy key. And now we can just pop them both in and then head straight through. Gog. John? What is it, Holmes? So, as Dr. John Watson's here, we can head straight down and we can just uh, interact with Holmes. Um, I, I do apologise, sorry, it, that wasn't the path of the... Um, and you can use left trigger to use your lantern. It's not time for the invisible path just yet, but uh, we, we're coming close to it. I'm glad. Something that's fine... I mean, don't sound too sympathetic, John. Jesus, man. So have a look at the big Cthulhu statue here. What we're going to do is interact with this three times, and you will get the Curiosity Kill the Cat achievement. So again, interact with the statue here three dos times. I hear you. Kjernak, Flegethor, Lebumna, Siaha, Inguft. Finglui, Maglanafa. Kutulu, Rilia, Waganagal, Fatagan. What? What on? What on earth? How is that possible? Now, boy, we can do some investigating. So, have a look at the the very much sleeping man, chilling. And then again, all you're going to do is just interact with the hot spot. So the first one is going to be his hand. Dried mud crumbs. Well, he should have washed them before he died, huh? Uh, have a look at his other hand. <laughs> That's the two hands. Uh, don't have a look at anything else down below right there. Oh, in fact, well, oh, well, we get into his belly. That's because he had uh, your hated restaurant before he uh, succumbed to his injuries. And then interact with his face. Again, I'm not putting any restaurant in that. I'm just saying whichever one you guys don't like the most. So that makes it funny for everybody. Uh, so head to the right here, and then we've just got a couple of things again that we're going to interact with. The first is going to be um, a sedative or something on the left, the little bottle. And then on the sort of right, or basically in front of you there, uh, have a look at the box. Black Edelweiss Institute. Now we're going to head slightly right, literally have a look at the other part of the table, and we're going to have a look at some more things. The first one is going to be the box full of two dozen pendants. Holy monkeys, that must be worth at least a non-fortune. And then uh, interact with the letter right here. Uh, rotate it if you want, but we just need to... Oh, well, that's who the guy is then. Turn it around, interact with it again. Um, so you've got a passport and some... Um, scribblings interact with the advertisement flyer as well and then just underneath it or just above it sorry is the blade old blood stains i've never seen a pattern like okay so from here then we're going to head to the right again we are going to be doing an investigation scene right at the back corner uh, just to the right of the Cthulhu statue here. We're going to interact with these uh, this bit of dry clothes. Then we are going to interact just to the right of it then is the next thing. As you can see with the green, it's uh, just some rope. Chilling rope. Then just above it, go uh, press right bumper, of course, and have a look at the drawing intentional mud drawing. And then just above it is the last piece. Mm, 
Mmm, delicious blood and human hair. Lovely. Right, head down the steps. Can be a bit dark, so if you want to, go into your settings, turn up the gamma, and turn up the brightness, if you so wish. Uh, have a look at this bit of wall right here. It's, uh, just interact with it. Then from here, turn around, go to the right, and then interact with a couple of boxes here. Again, we have to do a little investigation scene. The first one is to the box. A small blood stain, but not serious. Then if we have a look over to the right, it's going to be the lid. Well, it's going to be the lid, and if you want there, you can pop in the uh, the right bumper to put in the scratches. And then it, it's sort of somewhere there it is. So interact with the lid, and that'll be do. That'll be do. Let's break it. And now from here, head down uh, sort of to the left, all the way into the back left corner of the room, as it were. And we've got a few more things to find. So the first one is going to be uh, some clothes. Oh, uh, uh, forcefully removed. No, that's no good. Then have a look to the, um, the thing to the right there, the, the uh, that thing. So, yeah, that'll be two of them. Completo. And we are all, in fact, we're all done now with the whole investigationing scening. So, job done. Right, so, from here then, what we can do now is press the right bumper. That wasn't an edit, by the way. I don't know what happened right there. So, we're going to click it. And now this one, that's not the correct one. It's actually the... the the, the picture you need there is the guy throwing the lab coat on his back. Uh, so I did get that one wrong, but again, that's fine. We'll come back and do that. But you need it to uh, be throwing it on his back. Head over to the boxes once more. And then click at the fingers, click at the wrists. And it is going to be that one there, where he's basically forcing me into the box. Turn to the right, and we're going to go to the imagination node right here, the back wall. Uh, and it's going to be where a lot of people are just worshipping and being like, uh, Yes! Don't even know what they're worshipping. They're just sort of, uh, they got drunk and decided to come here and now they regret it. Head up the steps. And for this one, we are going to be looking for... Oh, hello, tied up man. That's exactly what we are g going to be looking at. Is the one with the knife. There we go. So the tied up man and the guy with the curved knife. Have a look here at the next part. The guy just, well, the guy really chilling there, and it should be just with two people. One going, ah, ha, 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 and the one basically killing him. Um, as you'll see, I will get this one wrong, which is fine. So, uh, hopefully you won't get any wrong. If you do, like I said, it really doesn't matter. But it's because I got this lab coat wrong. Uh, the lab coat one wrong. So I had to do it when it um, was looking more like that. So he's ripping it off his back. So, you know, close enough. Anyway, once that's done, validate it, and don't forget to date it. Many people were brought to this place. Their abductors stripped off their clothes and discarded them in a pile. The prisoners were kept in a soporific trance by the use of narcotics. A few tried to resist, but alas, in vain. After a few days, everyone was stuffed in a crate and sent elsewhere. Only one captive was left behind. He was strangled to death on this altar. Uh, what? What the hell is? Ha Please tell me we found all we needed to, huh? I think we found a. Yet we have no clue as, and that's where you're wrong, Watson. How about you? I mean, to be fair, if you think you're having a bad day, that does sound like a pretty cruddy time down there. So what we need to do now is go to our evidence tie-in locker thing, and we're going to put who is the dead man on the altar. So uh, we're going to go into our observations, and of course we're just trying to get in together. So uh, press unknown man on the altar. And then if we go into our documents and testimonies, we're going to go to uh, the advertisement flyer. And then we're going to go to passport, just to the right of that. And it'll tell you exactly who it is, and when he is, and how he is now. Well, we all know how he is now. <laughs> uh, basically, he's not working for the private detection agency anymore, let's put it that way. So, next one, where have the abducted been sent to? So, uh, we need to interact here with the... Uh, tin box with Edelweiss. Tin box of Edelweiss. Yep, that'll do. Good observations, and then go to Warehouse 12 Happenings. So, Warehouse 12 Happenings, tin box, and then we're going to go to Cross Inside Rectangle. Which means it's Ketubus, or Jeebus, Cthulhu Man, something.
So now we're going to be doing a new thing again. What you need to do is go to Abductor's Root and then press the Y button to search in the archives. So make sure it's Abductor's Root. Press the Y button here and then we have to do a couple of things. So the location is Europe. Go down and then date of establishment is the 1700s. And then down to type of organization, which is private facility. Press the white button to search it. And we are good, man. We are good. Dr. Watson, how does a trip... It sounds unex... It's all about the box. Put two and two together. Add a... If we hurry, we... As grateful as I have been for your... Hello, Mr... Nonsense. I'm no such thing. My troop was ambushed. The man with the rose... A translator. Yeah. You, a surgeon by trade, would... What? And how many men have you helped since? No more than a handful. How many people could... Holmes, I... I would start with... Right, so on to chapter three, it is then. So as Dr. Johnny Boy, we're gonna go straight ahead and talk to the nurse again, smashing through all the dialogue as the point. At their earliest convenience, yes. Wait here, bitte. Mr. and Mrs. Bronson. My apologies for keeping you waiting, Doc. Do not be sorry, Professor. The work hardly is. I take it you work. Admissions, yes. Word of mouth. But rather than taking a my asylum's reputation. Everyone, your attention, please. Guten day. Yes, hi. Hello. The name's... What seems to be the matter, Doc? That man... Well... No, 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 no. In my... But I have so much more to... Nurse! If... Herr Colby. From not... Look, Professor. Now, if I don't speak, obviously, during any dialogue sections, it basically means you can pick whatever you want. If you somehow get it wrong or whatever, you can just pick the other one anyway. So, only when I speak, that'll be a very important dialogue. So, next up, we're going to be locking the next pick. Lock? Lock pick? So, um, now, hopefully you remember what to do. Like I said, you press the left trigger to go outside. And then you'll press the left stick to go over to the arrows. One, two, three, and four this time. And then use the right stick. Move it up to adjust it. <clears throat> so, for this next one then, eventually I'm going to get it out anyway. Get the lock out. I know what you, I know what you're thinking. But no, I'm just, uh, for some reason, really taking my time here. No, there we go. So, the first one, you're going to put it up twice. So, put the first one up twice. The second one, put it up four times. The third one, put it up three times. And the last one, put it up once. So that's what it should look like. Again, press the right trigger, and that should be good. Now, we're going to get the achievement on this level. So we've got another two picks to lock. Two locks to pick, even on this level. So, uh, incredibly, there's no one about, which is all good for us. So go to the right-hand side and just head through, straight up the steps. Again, incredibly, no security guards, no nothing here. So that's always handy. Uh, interact here with the bottle of Eidenweigen Schmausen Trousen. Yeah, we just exit. We'll just pick that up. Lovely. So we got some sea date, and some sea bass, but some sea date. Uh, what we can do then is just head not into the reception door. Just in the middle here is the map. Gygax. That that, that so there's got to be a Pokemon called Gygax by now, isn't it? Um, they, they 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 put up stuff like Trebuchet and stuff. So there's got to be one called Gygax. Uh, you can try the reception door. That's not going to be uh, very helpful to you. So we can head back through this next door. Um, and again, old baldy side on the head, baldy back on the head, he ain't gonna let us through either. So, block paths. So what we can do now is just head back down the steps, go into our little jail cell block, as it were. Head to the left here in the apothecary, apothecary, apothecary. And again, we're just gonna have a look for a few couple of things here. First one is going to be just on the uh, left-hand side somewhere. There we go. So it's the white bottle just hiding and chilling. Uh, next one is going to be in the middle of us, directly in front of us. It is this machine of sorts. 
And to the right of us is another bottle of Seedate. Final, final product, ready to cure madness or to push one deeper into its grasp. With this equipment, they can create any type of medication. Okay, so have a look around the table. Um, we're going to look at the uh, the next desk right here. We've got some block A patients, and you can have a look at that. But that's actually just a new case, so we don't actually need to worry about that. Uh, but as long as you've got the block A patients uh, letter, and then we'll interact with a couple of these syringes. Once that is done, we can't actually nip through here just yet. Uh, no, no one's here. Oh, thank God for that. Right, so head back out. And we're going to speak to who he believes is Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon Bonaparte? You know, that guy. Fortunately for you, I'm in... You are? Tell me. The goal. Please, we don't have time. Do you know with whom you... Sp huh? The one and only. Emperor of the French, once I am free and have exacted my revenge against... Right. By the way, Mattingly, I told you to get rid of those sideburns. You're off the team. For good. Says Mr. Barnes. Right, okay, sounds good. Right, so for the next one then, this next pick, lock pick at the end, uh, make sure to put the first one up once, the second one up three times, the third one up two times, the fourth one up three times, and the last one up four times. So that's one, three, two, three, and four. That's what it should look like. And then we're through that one. And then we've just got one more pick to lock, lock to pick. And here we are in the lager room. Oh, yes, come on. Oh, storage room. Well, that just got my hopes up incredibly, didn't it? So we're on to the right-hand side here. You're looking at the Tulpa phenomenon, phenomenon, which will also unlock us the Fond Memories achievement. So have a look at the big pile of books there. Make sure to grab this Fond Memories achievement. Then interact with the box on the floor. Uh, you can interact here with the pencil or the note. Note pencil. And then just on the floor, well, I say just on the floor, just in front of us again, is uh, another bit of pipes. A bit of tube, a bit of piping, whatever you want to call it. A metal tube. I'm going to call it a metal pipe, just a mess with you. Well, not really. Uh, have a look at the desk again. Have a look at the framed photo here. Zeigenflight der Wurstaschtung. Maybe I can barely speak English, let alone German, so I apologize for butchering that completely by the way, uh, and then interact with the toolbox. A simple toolbox, yet capable of repairing anything. Okay, so once we're done with that, then if we go to the left, just to the left, you can see the dumb waiter, which is just a bit harsh, so you're going to interact with the crank. Well, that comes in handy in a supposedly functioning building. Have a look at the photograph. Look at this photograph! Every time Nickelback sings, it makes me laugh. And then, yeah, they were not bad at the first bit, but now they got a bit crappy, didn't they? Anyway, uh, interact there with the, the dumb waiter, which every waiter on the planet is just like, bruh, stop calling me that. And then that's all good. So now what we can do, we can't change clothes yet. Ah, oh, that's a shame. We're going to go to our evidency lockery thing to how to satisfy, remove the guards. So two syringes. And then go to uh, metal tubes. So metal tubes, syringes, and a bottle of sedative. They're the three that you need. So let's get it, boy. Let's get the hell out of here now, man, you know. Uh, yeah, man, let's do it. So, uh, in fact, we're just looking at the... Box for one more time. Uh, have a look at the metal tube to actually pick one up. And then, well, you know when you finished, when it says itself. We're all done in here. So, uh, what we could do, head to the right into the apothecary room. And then just press the A button here to interact with it. And Sherlock will, incredibly on his own, smash him in the buns. Um, so, you can press the right trigger or the A button to shoot him. Look at that. Sorry, mate, your slick haircut is about to be doomed! So, are we going to take off the mutton chops? But we are going to uh, get the doctor in the nud and get him out of here. 
so I don't actually know where we put him, but we get the disguise on. So have a look at the lot of the bottles again. You're going to pick up another bit of these sedatives and then interact with the lid that we found in London. Yes, because everyone's high. They're off the nut. And then over to the right-hand side, you can see a little bit of paper. A letter to Mr. Schnitzer. Oh, that's hilarious. My name is Mr. Schnitzer. I don't like to take a schnitz. Uh, so heading through to the left, to the right. To the right again. Jesus. Miss, I... How? I am quite certain you... So, I... You talk strange. Hell's... Only hide. I mean, I said go, or you will. Okay, so she's had a few too many drinks, shall we say? So we're gonna help her out. So directly in front of us is the laundry room right here. Don't worry about the smoke; it can't kill you. But head to the right into the uh, well laundry room, as I said. To the right, and interact with the locker where we find a creepy old doll. Not only a creepy old doll; it's got barely any eyes and its head shaved. Eh. <laughs> Grudendatten. Anyway, so you interact with the baldness of the side of the head. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just go into the pizza maker. Oh, that's nice. At least they got a pizza maker here. Uh, <laughs> I wish it was a pizza maker. Uh, so interact there with the fabric. And then over to the left, interact with the next piece of Jalabia. Very good. I like it. I like it a lot. It looks very comfy, actually. Very cool on the underneath. So head out. And then speak to Gerda Gerda. Oh, Gerda Gerda. Yeah. One and a two and a three, Maka Gerda. Heidi! Oh. Please. Go. Shh, Heidi. Professor Gygax seems to. Before she got here. Tell me all you know. We'd hear their scream. How did you end. The nurses say I'm prone. I remember it too bad. I shall. Now we've got all the testimony we need. But we've still got a lot more to do. So head back into the hallway with the laundry room. Go to the left this time to go into the defuge, whatever this is. Left again. And left totally again. And you're going to find uh, something in the wall there. Scribbled in Georgian. And it means... I don't know. So if anybody from Georgia or anybody knows Georgian is playing, let us know what that means. Uh, head into the cell on the left and have see something sticking out. Ooh, don't sit on it. It's a Jeebus cross. Of sorts, should we say, of sorts, yes. So uh, once we've done those two, we should now be good to go. Uh, ha having a look at the table here, we are just going to interact with the big folder. Medical evaluations, basically, Y'all are nuts, because we made you nuts. That's basically what it is. And another bottle of sedative. Well, to be fair, it beats getting bitten and kicked in the nards, doesn't it? Um, it, 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 yeah, yeah. Women probably won't agree, but men will agree. Getting kicked in the nards hurts. And today, while I'm recording this, my two kids have hit me five times in the old nards. So that hurts. So anyway, interacting with the wall right there, then interact with the bench, or the, you know, the, the tray which you carry uh, bodies on. <coughs> Excuse me, I can't get my English out today. And then having a look at the bunch of boxes right here as well. We are going to be doing another little investigation scene in just a moment. Um, but have a look at the uh, thing right, right in front of us. Oh, it's just water, it's a water can. Um, interact with the chest of the supposed body. Dirt and sweat. Nice. Well, at least they give him a hole right there to breathe in. That's very nice, actually. I didn't expect that one. And then just interact with the coin sticking out of the pocket. Or the pendant, sorry. That's basically uh, just... The, the, that's Pokemon, bro. That's Kabuto. No, not Kabuto. What's the other one? Yeah, it is Kabuto, right? Um, oh man, I can't believe I forgot the Pokemon. So uh, interacting with the other box, interact with the bottle, then have a look at the left, the scratches, and the broken nails. Oof, Jesus, man, I bet that pinched a bit. Not as pinchy as being in a box covered in your own dirt, sweat, and feces for a couple of days. Then interact there with the, basically the middle of the box is just a uh, lot of blood loss. So, well, we all know what happened there, don't we? 
So, um, I think we should be all done. No, having a look at the opposite side. It's a stamp. Slicey as Bricey. And then we are going to actually have a look at the door. Deliveries, well, I bet it's not a fast food delivery, is it, unfortunately, uh, for these souls. So what we can do now is do the small scene right here. So right bumper, and then what we're going to do is this is not going to be the first one. So click it again, click your fingers, and it is the people in boxes that we are doing. Uh, now for the second one, uh, it can be slightly kind of confusing, but what we need to do is this image, but with one of the bodies uh, sticking out. I'll show you what I mean now. Not this one, but this one. So that is the one that we need. That's the image that you need right there. So the one body lying down, the one body sticking out. And for the final image, what you need is the doctor here um, clubbing the prisoners right on the head. So for me, it was the third, uh, the third picture right here. There it is. So the guy clubbing the prisoners. Once you can do that, press the Y button here to completely validate it and it should work. A bit of an edit there because I got that second one wrong somehow, but it, that's exactly what it was. A cargo in secret. Next, the crates were opened, freeing their passengers. Not everyone survived the journey. Dirty, exhausted, and dehydrated prisoners were then herded into cells. But all the cells are now empty, and I have not located a morgue. Time to find Hell's door. So once that's done then, we're going to press start again, and we're going to press X to pin investigating the Ed Vice. The Ed, Ed and Eddies. So make sure to pin that one, and then we can uh, crack on with some more stuff. Uh, but uh, have a look at the floor, and you're going to see the welded shut sign of stuff. So there it is. That's welded shut, so we ain't getting through there, unfortunately. Right, so from here then, uh, what we can do is go ahead, have a look at the, the basically right in the corner, you can see some more scratches. Something has moved through here. Yes, dead people probably. And then have a look at the um, indent here on the wall. Smells of machine oil. Well, let's have a look. Is it? Shall we break our way through? Eh, no, we can't actually. We can't do that. Uh, but we have completed the scene. So what we can do? Head directly to the left. I actually there was an edit there because I missed it about three times very stupidly. And then straight through the door and interact with Gerda this time. Well. <laughs> I mean, this just be creepy, bruh. One that made the girder, please. How can you speak to me? She's suffering. Leave it with me. Right, now we've got to fix up Heidi, apparently, which, you know, is still very nice of us. So, what we're doing then, from here, we are going to be going um, straight back down to the laundry room-ish, going into the actual laundry room itself. What you need to do is just um, press the right bumper here to have a look at both of those and then pick up both of the items. Garments of several dozen people at least. Now you didn't need to have a look at the last thing, I uh, don't think that was anything, but we've got the buttons, we've got the thread, so what we can do is head to the right of where Herd of the Gerda is chilling, go to the left, go to the right through this metal gate, through the right again, down to the left, through the door into the lager room, the unfortunately, uh, the unfortunately named lager room. And again, interact with these two, then what you're actually going to be doing then is picking up the, both of these items here as well. So, picking up the nails and picking up the construction glue, and then that'll do. And then we can head all the way back to Herda Gerda Schmerda. <clears throat> right, so, from here, we're going to go to the next right. And through this next gate, boop, to the left, to the right. And here we are then, um, straight back at Gerda's cell. So, yeah, for some reason I got really confused as to where to go a couple of times there. But now she's fixed up Heidi. Now she's going to start talking. And they're going to be like, God damn, God damn, man. You helped. Heidi, there are things... Ask if you did. So, first up with the confrontation then, we are going to choose medical evaluations. Look, Gerda! 
Heidi. Uh. Next, we're going to choose investigating the Eidensfreisens. I found Hell's Door, but it... Hell's Door. And finally, we're going to choose Gerda's testi testimony. Gerda's testimony, that is. Nothing else with testes in it. That's not true. You, Gerda... And you believe that snotty little... Oh, not sorry, I did reali I just realised it was the wrong one. It's not investigating the Eidenschreisen, it's a note from Professor Becker. That's what we were after, so I do apologise there. Um, but it's not investigating the Schnauzen I could tap your teeth out with a hammer. You could. How? I can... St but the key, Heidi, the key to Hell's door... Tell him! But and now I say tell him! The Professor... She has... Behind those closed doors, those... Guy gags. Of course. Leave? <laughs> you joke. Righto, so that's the last time I think we have to uh, do anything for Gerda, I believe. So, um, hmm. It's nice. Right, so what we're going to do, we're actually going to press start now. We're going to go into our uh, investigation -y DNA -y thing. How to get the key to Hell's door. So, what you're going to do, go to your observations, and then what we need to do is have a look at Watson's successful infiltration. A working dumbwaiter, and then the, uh, if we go to documents and testimonies, the, the Heidi's testimony about Hell's Door. So Watson, Heidi's testimony, and a working dumbwaiter. So one more to do then, how to get Watson for help. And the first one, if we press the right trigger, you need to go to Patient Hates the Guards. So patient hates the guards, and then go to blocked path upstairs. And that will go, ah, oh, now I know what to do. And then we can back out a couple of times and get it going, girl, get it going. So, what we're going to do from here, we're going to head to the right. All right, uh, right again. Right again. Left through the, the gate. We're actually going to get, be getting the last uh, picking lock right now, and we need to speak to Napoleon Boney Party Boom, the old boner bags. Uh, that's that's Aurelian. We're not going to bother with that one. So we're going to speak, and we are going to let him free, boys. So for the final time, then what you need to do? So for the first one, it's up twice. So the first one's up twice. Second up three times. The third one up once. Fourth one up three times, the fifth one up twice, and the last one up four times. So that's two, three, one, three, two, four. Once you've done that, uh, we will finally get the achievement here called um, Lock, Stock, Barrel. You came to your senses. Yes, I did. Rizanikis needs you, but the guards upstairs, ha! They will pose no problem. Get him! Watson, Holmes, what do you do? It is unimportant. What is happening? It's quite simple. How can you call any? Watson, we can discuss this. What? Focus, Watson. Logic dictates that guy. Holmes, I, I. Yes, you can, Watson. You are. I am terribly sorry, Mr. Kuntz. After the war, my nerves, I, uh, I fled all that. It is nothing, uh, patient. It now. So, let's play as old Johnny Boy now, the mustache. Right, so, have a look. And what we're going to do is have a look at our handgun and the picture that Heidi drew. Now, Johnny Boy doesn't know who Heidi is, and we do, which is all creepy. Uh, it's on the right-hand side, basically drawn into the desk right there. Did a child make these? And once we're done admiring, probably a kid's drawing, <laughs> you think wrong. Head down to the left and interact with the uh, Gygax's door, the old evolution of Snorlax. Professor. Please, my time is far too valuable. I hope Nurse Kuntz has been taking good care of you. Professor, it is time. Hey, Wolf can wait until tomorrow. Uh, as you... You still see patients here. Only, and yet I rarely get to pick the bread. I'm afraid... Dr. Watson, the... I think once a... 
So when I read about the Black Edelweiss and... I suppose my Edelweiss was all... But before we continue, I want... Ah. Uh, it is simple. If you... Surely there are... How naive. You remind me of a man I once... A uh, co... The former director here. I was simply... A... While I am pleased you appreciate it, was my con... No, not... No, no. I am... What do you mean? It is obvious. Your mind craves... I'm certainly in... Of course. I... Kunz. Yes, pro... Our preparations will take a little time. So, out of the director's office and into the hall. So we're going back the way we came. Past the double doors. Straight through, to the right. Through these doors. Or this door, sorry. And then we're going to interact with Gygax's patient report. So, um, that is actually the first one that we're going to get for the history check achievement. So you need to interact with uh, this photograph as well. The, um, the note that obviously we just looked at as well. Um, which will all be about all Gygax herself. So that will be history check one out of two done. So now from here we can head back into the main hallway. Go to the right. Uh, well, let's just ignore all the people here and go straight. Uh, go to the... Patient room 2, which I'm not even going to try and pronounce that one. Interact here with the patient's poetry. And you've picked that one up. And then you're going to have a chat with this guy, who, as it turns out, was the former director. Oh, my God. Doctor. We're in the Black Adel. But why am I? That's what I was... I can't remember. It's all right. You don't need to push. Mr. Vo oh, Hello. I'm sorry, but I don't think... We were just discussing the... That name does... Holmes the thing? Excuse me, who are you? I am Dr. Watson, and Holmes is... Well, you could... But why am I here, Doc? I'm sh... Right, time for a little stare down, so he feels uncomfortable. So have a look at his face. Uh, one side of his face is paralyzed, that's unfortunate. Have a look at the balding of his head. A couple of deep scars there, that's not very looking good. Um, and then if we go... Down ever so slightly, we can now interact with his middle finger. Severe chemical burns. Uh, he's flipping, <laughs> flipping Gygax off, I assume. Go down, have a look at his other hand. Skin pigmentation. And then what we could do, it is ill due to treatment itself. So the, the top one for me, but it is ill due to the treatment itself. And then accept it. And then crack on with the rest of the dialogue. Dear Lord. Excuse me? Oh. Well, I suppose that was short-lived, wasn't it? Right, we're going to go into our DNA stuff now. So what we're going to do is go, how to lure Gygax out of... Uh, no, why does Gygax care about Wolf? Sorry, this is Watson's one, of course. So why does Gygax care about Wolf? A note from Professor Becker. Go to the right, and then make sure to choose character portrait, patient Wolf. And then for the last one, go to the right again into Documents and choose Old Photograph. Now we're going to choose how to lure Gygax out of her office. Uh, it could have been done in any order, by the way. Uh, again, it doesn't really matter for any achievements or anything. So go to Observations and then Very Important Patient. And then go to Documents and then Go to Professor Gygax's testimony. And then finally, what we're going to do is go to Patient's Poetry. Now we know how to get Snorlax out of our office. This is basically like that one, the first Pokemon game, isn't it? Trying to remove Snorlax. Hello again. You won't remember me, and you are Professor Becker. You were the previous... Professor, really? Actually, that name does sound familiar. Wait... As a matter of fact, I have more for you to jot down. Oh, yes. Yes. P Professor Gygax did the... But we will play a trick on her. Dear Professor Gygax, I see now that you never did... You are not... And by the time you make it to my cell, the police... Signed, Professor... There. It's done. My name is John Watson. I'm a doctor from London, and presently I'm risking my life. I'm tired and hungry, and I have not had a good bath in weeks, and yet despite it all... Good heavens! Oh, we're just playing a little trick on Gygax. <laughs> right, heading through down here, down the hallway, to the left. And we're going to speak to Bald Broski. What's his name? Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> his name is Kuntz. 
but, um, <laughs> excuse me, sir, what you call me? His name actually wasn't that before. Um, it was um, just, it, it, it was something else German. But, um, well, he decided to be a Kuntz. So uh, that's what they stuck with. Right, have a look at Gygax's desk. A few things we're going to look at then. Uh, in the left-hand side drawer, first of all, for, at the very top. Open it up and then interact with the diary right here. That'll be Gygax's diary. pa -ba! Again, you can read it if you want, but, uh, well, I'm telling you, not all my colleagues approved of the rule change, so now I'm the only professor here, no matter how the hiding yourself of strong will, and uh, the strongness was of the person I shot at, shall last my work and flourish. Why am I taking so long? Oh, okay, there we go, sorry. Apparently I was reading it. I do apologise again. Uh, right, so, uh, we can interact now with the knife, or the sort of letter opener, or whatever it is. This is too small. It is too small. Holmes wants something bigger. You know what Holmes likes. Hmm... Right, interact with the top drawer again, and then what we can do now is interact with the letter, basically directly in front of us, of course. And that's just a letter from the Orleans Bank. And finally, what you're going to do is interact with the actual key, is what we need. About two inches, that is definitely what Holmes asked for. You can't go any bigger than two inches. Oh, no, 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 that, that, that stings. That's ring sting right there for you. Anyway, all six of those done. We can now get out of Gygax's office. Uh, incredible that she didn't lock her door, by the way. Anyway, heading to the left. Heading to the left again into the Küche. Did I pronounce that good? <laughs> Probably not. And then all the way to the back to the dumb waiter. Right then, so... We are now back as Sherlock the nurse with the sideburns. Or maybe he's got rid of him, I can't see. Go to the right into the classroom looking area. Uh, we can interact with the chalkboard. The writing is mostly gone. Phonetic symbols, perhaps. Yes, I think so. You know? Uh, have a look on the left side desk and then pick up the tube or whatever this is. A wax cylinder. Of course I knew that. I was just messing. Uh, what would you do? Turn around. And we can interact with th this thing on the desk right here, and it is just something to look at, plus the letter. Broken tooth. I bet that pinched in the morning again. And also, when I said letter, what I mean is you'll have to move down slightly and then interact with the chain right here. The inside of the cuff is worn. It's been used often. So after standing still for what seems to be a kind of a while, we're going to head straight back through the door here. Out into the main hallway. Oh, wow, we've got some cthulhu -y stuff going on. I wonder what the next Cthulhu-type game, or the next Lovecraft game from Frogways is going to be. Anyway, interact with the well at the end of the hallway. What you're going to do is interact with the axe. There it is. And then what you're going to do is interact with the well which will get you the Gaze into the Abyss achievement. Now, some of these miscellaneous achievements can be missed, because you don't actually have to get all of this evidence. Uh, so, they, so these are technically missable. Um, but there we go. So once you've uh, interacted with that and the well, Gaze into the Abyss achievement will unlock. So, turn around. Once we've done that, now we're going to get the next bit of history. So straight in front of us, and go straight through the next door as well, into this, like, nurse's bit, interact with the desk, and then what you're going to do, there you go, the notebook of Professor Gygax, that is what will get us the history check achievement. So you should have uh, found one as Watson in Gygax's office, and this one here as Sherlock. Um, so interact with this wax cylinder type thing again, and then interact with the other desk, and what you're going to do is interact with the letter first. Then go ahead and interact with the key. And finally, it's going to be the letter to the right, just sticking out of the book right there. So again, these people are not very good, are they, to be uh, leaving stuff about like that? Y'all suck. Y'all. Y'all, y'all, y'all. Hey, American, y'all, 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 y'all. Uh, into the next room then, interact with this machine, or the, the one fuse. Dynamo. Well, how clever. And then interact with the death-style electric chair. Yeah. Impossible to escape. Not if you had a knife, which 
You could then have bendy hands and cut it yourself, but yeah, pretty impossible. Have a look at this bit here, right? Oh, brain dissectioning of a bird. Uh, well, protein's protein, yo. So head through the next door going down the steps. Get out. Holy crap! No, please! So, whenever you see a big, bald, naked dude like that, old guy, probably one of those in every gym ever, time to get the hell out of here. So, straight back up and straight through the door. Get out of this room. By waiting for the elevator, apparently. A hydraulic elevator? How ingenious. Watson? Home. What are you still do? Still? I was trying. I only asked you to find the key. Says the man who looks. I am fine. You're hardly fine. You reek of congealed blood and chem. Never mind me. Where's? I'm afraid she's over there. And I found her like that when I entered. On my word. What? <sighs> Yet another wrinkle in a hush. <clears throat> well, that is unfortunate. <laughs> that is pretty unfortunate there. So, Guy Gax has just been stabbed square in the eyeball by um that patient. Which she thought was Professor Becco. Wow! No right, anyway, uh, have a look at her tie. Have a look at her eyeball, which seems to have. I mean, yeah, that's, that's unfortunate, that. Then have a look at the clothes there on the right hand side. So, Watson, naughty man, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Anyway, no more Snorlax, Guy Gax. We are out of it. So, from here, interact with the desk there. Uh, ooh. Um, how... right, let's just pop Heidi back down. Uh, go wash your hands as well. Don't interrupt me, mustache man. I feel piece of judge. Right, so, back into our DNA stringy bit. Where does the, uh, evidence lead next? So, what we're gonna do then is go all the way over to documents. And then three that we need is going to be um, a handwritten letter, uh, the letter from New Orleans Bank, and the telegram from New Orleans as well. So a handwritten letter, a letter from New Orleans Bank, and a telegram from New Orleans. So this trip is, this adventure has taken us everywhere. We've got what we needed, Watson. This conspiracy. You are joking. I seldom do. Let's go. There's nothing in... Holmes? Hmm? You seem troubled. I'm not troubled, Watson. I am... That place was awful. In... Men reduced to gibbering imbecile. When a doctor does go... That woman did not deserve the title. So... I knew another man like that once. My since... In the end, she was just a shadow of herself. Should you see me crack? We can return to London. Report what- We know nothing of what awaits. What danger- Nonsense. We draw nearer to New Orleans with every passing minute, and that those answers for all their perversity- So be it. I know you to be a diligent author, but if I may make one- Holmes, after our trip to Nippy Switch. Do not get carried away, Watson. I know, but you... We shall rest when our investigation... I shall ask you to handle our bags as you wish. Oi! Stop it! So on to chapter four then. Now, weirdly, the, the game's kind of short, but the chapters feel like they take forever in a good way. Uh, so what we're going to do is just go ahead and speak to Watty Watson here, the angriest of Watsons. In fact, nah, we're not going to bother. What we're going to do is get an achievement. So right on these boxes... So, uh, where Watson was standing, um, the bank holds an auction, so we need that one. And then what we do is head to the right up the steps here. Uh, keep going straight, now go to the right past the logs. What you're going to see then is this poster, interact with the poster, and this is actually going to get us the going once dot 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 achievement. Um, well, to be honest, I, I, do, I was trying to see if we could pet the dog first, but we can't pet the dog, which... Probably the only blip in this game that was Frogwares. Always make sure you can pet the dog. So what we could do is head uh, straight 
past the Harbour Master's office. Now that writing is uh, very Sinking City, isn't it? If you've ever played the Sinking City, if not, I've got a 100% achievement guide just for you guys. Um, go straight up, keep following the basically the tram tracks around. And then eventually, on the left, we're going to see a guy outside um, a building. On our left, here he is coming up. We're going to be getting another achievement here. So dialogue, there's only one option that is that is um, important. Uh, what we're going to do first is observe the broski. So interact with his eyeballs. Squints, which means he needs glasses or something. Uh, head down and have a look at his fingers. Oh, he's got a newspaper. Oh, my gosh. Have a look at his pocket. There's a condom in there, mate. Oh, no, it's a sandwich. Sorry. Sorry, it looked rubbery. Uh, maybe that's what they ate in the, the 1880s. Right, um, make sure to choose Critical Thinker. So it is Critical Thinker that we need to be choosing. And very importantly then, for the next dialogue, make sure to choose the top option, which is I am Frank Barnaby. So choose that option and you will get the Let Me Be Frank achievement. Again, if you end up missing any specific dialogue or if you end up missing achievement, this game auto-saves a lot, and um, they're pretty generous with the auto-saves as well. So, if you again, if you do miss anything, you should be able to just go back to it and try it again. Right, so, Frank Barnaby, that's who we're going to look for next. So, pin Mr. Frank Barnaby to your um, homepage or whatever it is, and then what we're going to do is head straight... Generous type. How marvellous, Holmes. A city within a city. Next, we're going to take a little right straight into Chinatown, boys. Hello, please, China. Hello, Chinatown. Again, you can uh, speak with a couple of people here if you want. Some, some will tell you some things, and then some other people will say, you know, we haven't got any information. Uh, what we're going to do is head into the window. Well, have a look in through the window. It's because it's all been robbed, mate. It's the 1880s. Everything got robbed in the 80s. But there wasn't Facebook to bitch about it all the time. Uh, so you can interact with the door. Nothing. And now we're going to speak to these people as well. You're bone tired? Well, uh, how about you unbone yourself? <laughs> right, so there we go. Again, the, the extra bit of evidence here is literally just for the couple of points. Uh, um, so don't worry about if, the, if they're not there. Sometimes the NPCs will appear, sometimes they won't. So basically straight through into this little area. Take a little left. And there he is, drunk as the ace of spades. Yeah, this ain't looking good, is it? But anyway, unconscious with his eyes open, that'll do. So interact with him himself and then interact with his jacket to get the invitation. So I look like a haggard alcoholic. Eureka! What have you got? An idea. First, we'll need Mr. Barnaby's clothes. Holmes! Watson, time is of the essence. You will go- Holmes, we look nothing alike! The hat and coat. Holmes, must we really indulge in this place? So, just, that's kind of mustache there by um, Sherlock Holmes. Just because they got, both got a mustache doesn't mean they look alike, huh? Anyway, we are now, um, we are basically the mask. We are Jim Carrey's The Mask coming up. Uh, so head straight back through, all the way straight through Chinatown. Yeah, uh, so apparently this does fool people. Yeah, just 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 go and have a look, yeah. From here, go to the left. Where's the money, Barnaby? I'll wait here so as not to arouse suspicion. Mr. Barn... Er, uh, right you are. Right. Here you go. You okay, sir? I, uh... uh come on. Well, somehow we got straight through Barnaby and nobody beat us up for apparently we owing them money. So, a few things to look at then before we get into the nitty-gritty. On the right-hand side, then, is a note. Uh, it's a plaque with all the philanthropists on it, which includes Robert Downey Jr. and Iron Man. Um, so, what we could do now is head and speak to this lady. Again, dialogue options, crack on with them. Forgive Sir, I These gems are rather... These rare beauty, when they catch the light. It doesn't say where these... What? If you would like to know... You old dog, Barnaby. <laughs> oh, uh... You know... An important business opportunity. <laughs> Mister? What's wrong, Frank? You're... 
Now, of course, there's always one douchebag sheriff like this in every town, in American town, isn't there? So have a look at his large hat. Not like Scary Movie 3 where the hat gets bigger and that is just one hell of a hilarious scene. Uh, if you know what I'm on about. Sheriff Grubb, that sounds about right. Have a look at his medal. The Golden Revolver Champion. You Americans do love your guns, don't you? Uh, interact with the pockets. And then we're not going to look at the crotch goblet. We're just going to look at his fingers. Polished nails. Okay. So he is basically a fashionable uh, maniac. Of course I know you, Sheriff. Fines? That's funny. Ain't you at the... Now, assault, battery, disorderly... Look, Sheriff, and you know what we do to... So, here's all... Mighty, the people of this parish deserve peace. So, if Watson had tried to put on an American accent there, he might have got away with it, but... Oh, of course I knew you, Sheriff. <laughs> Mate, not everyone's that stupid. You right? Gets us nowhere what The Sheriff saw right through me. He knew who I was from the start. Extorted me. Right, so let's go into our map, and we're going to fast travel to the top right, which is the Harbour Master's office, and then head back down to where the boat is. So from here, go to the right. And then to the right again and head straight down. Still wearing that blighter's clothes. I'm going back to the boat to get changed. No. No! Was that your luggage again? I don't understand. We just got it back in order. Oh, bollocks. Now our clothes are in the bloomin' water. It was like the luggage had legs of its own. Oh, Mr. Pratchett will have my head. I ain't sure what you did to the sheriff, but it must- With respect, miss. Uh, if you were the real Frank Barn- But where are my manners? John, I didn't mean to be rude, I- Well, it's barely noon. And you've already made an enemy in Sheriff Grubb. The Watson. Well, Johnny, if you plan on sticking around, you be- Alas, I think- <laughs> you've got yourself in a fine pickle. The nymph? Is that what it's- Well, let's just say you ain't the only one. Now quit your stalling and head on over to the nymph. This Mr. Barnaby is proving rather useful. Perhaps you're not so... Ooh, Johnny likey very much. Anyway, uh, make sure to pin Lucy's help. And then we can go and see... Well, we're off to the broth. Off to the brothel. Hey, this game is starting to get even better. So heading down, turn to the left. Straight through. The nymph. Hello. Straight up and have a chat with Lucy. Johnny gets mightily disappointed. You. I can't thank you enough. As I was saying. Hmm. Well... Look for her in the fisherman's village. Bye. Thank you again, Lucy. Good luck, Johnny. Thank you, Lucy. So, uh, how much? How much for that bottle of champagne right there on the wall? <laughs> uh, well, goodbye, lady. I, I guess I'll see you later. Right, so, heading up the... Uh, in fact, we're going to interact with uh, Sherlock right here, and we'll change. Explain why you used to roll just one sleeve up. Did you, know, you get bored after the look through? actually compliments you. Why bother changing it? See, now that's banter. You know true friends when you banter amongst each other all the time. It's always fun. Until someone takes it too far and then it's even funnier, somehow. So, let's go to the right here. What you're going to do is we're basically heading for... Uh, is her name Champagne? I actually forgot now. Uh, but we're just going past this cart with bunches of sands on it and stuff. Yeah, and then we go to the left. Make sure the horse butt doesn't kick you. To the right. Take it back now, y'all. One half this time, beep. Do rest this game. Do rest this game. I'm gonna die. Tocqueville? No offense, Cher. Them two don't take kindly. How can champagne help you? Some other time, perhaps. Maybe. The bank in town recent. Cher. Thank you. May have been. And this rich man is? Don't know his name. That's all I know. Thank you for the op. Well, my girl, that's a hell of a name, but we don't actually need you just yet. Right, so, uh, what we're going to do then from here, we are actually going to go into our uh, 
D DNA thing. Who is jeweler A? And then what we're going to do is have a look at the plaque with philanthropists. Philanthropists, sorry. Philanthropists. Then go into documents. Banking house of E.W. Gray. And then Opal Tracker. So now we've got some kind of a lead, we are going to pin A for Arneson. Arsenant, <laughs> And then what we can do then is, now I end up interacting with this guy, he basically gives us a, a, I, I only wanted to ask him if, a, a, if he had any evidence and stuff, so d don't worry about speaking to that guy. It does get me four more points, even though you do leave, so, because uh, there may be someone on the bridge who you can ask for evidence, but again, if not, then nay panic, nay bother about it. So what we're going to do now, we're going to head to the Harbour Master's um, bit again. Straight in front of us, speak to this guy, and then we're out of here. And that is chapter 4 complete. Now, my internet went completely off, so you don't, un you don't see me unlock the New World Achievement for completing chapter 4. But trust me, it is done. And we start straight away then in chapter 5. So that was a nice short chapter, wasn't it? Right, so what we can do is effectively just head all the way straight until we hit a couple of double gates and we have a little chat with somebody up. Uranian. Cordona does sound rather magical. Do you think you shall ever return? I... I don't know. That place was home to some of my greatest memories and... some of my lowest moments. Lord. Excuse me, miss. Eula, sir. Waiting for... Y yes, sir. Come now. Something happened to Davy. Do you think he may have... No, sir. Davy... Fear not. There's another... See, I could... Please hurry. Chapter 5, The Horror at the Door. Right, so, uh, have a look at this bit of shed right here. Uh, press the right bumper to go into your imagination mode, and have a look at this lock first of all. You need to look at it first, otherwise these next bits won't appear. Then we can interact with the flower pot. Broken stems, chipped edge, fantastic. Then we can interact with it, and as we can see, there's a little key just chilling. Just waiting for us, just waiting to be grabbed and used. Yes. Right, so uh, we can ignore the other two. For now, we'll come back to that later. We're going to in interact with the, the key unlock. Jump straight through. And we're going to get an achievement here as well. As you can see there, this horse has been chilling and not even in the good way. Interact with Arneson's cab and then go out of the door. Turn directly to the right and interact with the bucket a uh, couple of times. Twice will do. There we go. Then we can go back to the horse, and we are going to give it the water to get the back in the saddle achievement. So there we go, straight back. There you go, old girl. You don't see him drinking it, but... Uh... Oh, sorry, that's just because we... Sorry, I didn't mean to put the pitchfork in your face. Sorry about that, lad. Anyway, that'll get you the back in the saddle achievement. So now what we're doing, we are going to go into the nice big mansion. Nice big mansion. In just a moment, there it is. The steps are going to be on our left. There they blow. But we're going to have a look because there's a bit of investigation in to do right here. A few dead bodies and such, you know how it goes. So, from here then, what we can do is just jump straight through the door. Do you smell that, Holmes? Something bad happened here. I know. Of course I smell it, mate. I've got a bloody nose, you know. So straight through the door on the left, and we're going to see El Dedo Bodo. So, that's what Watson's going to do. So wherever the mustachioed king is, he uh, get his bums in the kitchen and do some doctoring. Right, so, have a look at her, well, the stab wound, of course. Oof, man. That's a pretty painful way to go. Uh, interact with her belly. Or the blood on her belly, on her apron, or her hand. Blood roughly around that area. The poor woman tried to put up a fight. Uh, fair dues, fair dues, mate. Fair dues. Uh, have a look at the um, axe right here, or the, the, not the axe, it's a uh, meat cleaver, isn't it, sorry. And very cruelty, yes, Sherlock. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, so, 
From here then we're going to interact with the table as well. A couple of items here to look at. The first one's going to be the cup of brews. Tea for two, two for tea. Have a look at the newspaper. Used kitchen towel. And when I say newspaper, I mean used kitchen towel. And then interact with the chair by pressing the right bumper. By the way, it is like midnight. Right now in the UK as I'm recording, so my eyes are, my eyes are going and my brain is pouring out of my skull. Not like this woman on the floor though, in all fairness, so... Little wins, huh? So into uh, head out of the kitchen, interact here with the muddy footprint on the floor, the muddy boot print. And then if we head to the left, there's something else to have a look at again on the floor. Trails and dust, blood droplets. Oh, thank you so much. Have a look at the table, and we're going to see a letter from the locksmith. Tell your friends about me. I'm key. Right, and then what we could do is go into the next area of the room, interact with this one. Three things to find here. The first one is, of course, the candle. Ah, I bet it was, bruv. Uh, have a look at the little droplets. It's like a little trail, which. Um, it's just heading towards the door, as you can see, and finally have a look at the next boot print. Someone smaller walked over these boot prints. So, once that is done then, Sherlock's uh, had a little stretch. <sighs> Give it a little stretch, yeah. Have a look at the scratch marks here in imagination mode. Imagination. And that should be all good. See? Once it's gone, it's gone. We're all good. Right. So, cracking on, have a look at the fireplace here. And we're going to interact with the, the little burnt page. First of all. And then the next one, we're going to interact with the other burnt pages. Where we can't actually see anything. So, bang time here. Two out of two. You are a winner. Okay, so from here then, have a look at the, the blood stale. Uh, the blood, the blood trail, sorry, on the floor. And then have a look at the next body. That's very much unfortunate. So, come on out, white boy. Get in there, Shan. Right, so, first things first, we're going to look at the head. Damn, that's, uh, yeah, they do look worse than cloudy lemonade, them. Um, have a look at the stab wound, of course. Yeah, rigor mortis. Jesus. Now have a look at the stab wound. So hand and the stab wound. Yes, I think so. You're too wide for an ordinary knife. Anyway, have a look at his knees, and that'll be four to four. Hay on his trousers suggests a gardener or groom. This man has been dead for a week. The result of a sharp object piercing his Make it quick. You are mostly right. But I would bet he died five days ago. Heat and humidity will... So, after I'm apparently walking around in my own thing, uh, we're going to have a look at the picture painting right there. Mr. Arneson with his parade. And then from here, what we could do is we're going to um, make sure to pick up the candlestick as well here. There we go. So make sure we've uh, looked at that one. And then we can go into... We're going to try and open up these doors. Nothing's actually going to open, so that first one is locked. Go to the next one. And that's going to be locked as well, but it gives us, uh, starting to give us more of the imagination nodes that we need. So from here then, what we could do is now head up the stairs. Interact with this door, and go straight through. Have a look on the left-hand side. It's a very nice, uh, very nice room, this one. But have a look here at the photo. And we're going to have a look at Mr. Arnie Song. The blade, Watson. Oh, it's a, it's a, yeah, the blade. And then from here, uh, what we can do is actually interact with the desk itself. And we're going to uh, interact with the photo once again and click on it again. Yes, that's cute. And then have a look at the back. Arneson and Davy, 1881. Davy the Gravy Ravy. Right, have a look at the back at the book and have a look at the cover. And then interact with the newspaper on the right again. Have a look at that. By the way, i got to say, oh, things that bite, no doubt. Now, nah, that's an Australian book. Things that are massive and scares all the tourists when Australians just laugh at us because everything's so massive, but they're used to it. That's a hell of a book. Right, uh, there you go. So have a look at the letter. And that should be all four things out of four right there. To be fair, 
and then what we're going to do is go over to the right. Uh, we're just going to have a look at the painting in just a moment. We're actually going to pin the mansion crime scene first. So make sure to pin the mansion crime scene. Or the letter from Locksmith. Close enough, sorry. Letter from Locksmith, not the mansion crime scene. The letter from Locksmith, that will actually get us up the um, next bit here. It's a peculiar lock, which we're going to do. But I was going to say, do Australians always laugh at people who are scared of big bugs and stuff like that? And do Canadians laugh at everyone, especially those in the UK, when it's like when it's like minus four degrees? And we're like, oh, we're so cold. And then Canadians are just like, hey, you stupid. Yeah. Anyway, into the next bedroom, having a look here at the letter. Letter from La, La Cofia. And then we're going to have a look at the book once again. I thought we were going to get some Andrew Tate cigars there. Um, help you lose your mind. Just like uh, Andrew Tate. The douchebag. Uh, once those two are done, Watson's going to come in. We weren't doing anything, Watty. Don't worry. Then just go over to the picture. This is where the safe is actually behind. But of course, we've got a few more things to do first. Straight down, down the stairs now. We are done with this, uh, the upstairs for the moment. But we're actually going to go back into the kitchen and we're going to start the big and what seemingly seems like a long investigation. So head banging to the left through the kitchen and this is how we do it. Do it again, girl. So the first one we're doing is having a look at the old body of deadness. Uh, just getting rid of the, um, uh, just unpinning the evidence right there. We don't need it for the time being. So, so the first one here then is not this one, but it is going to be the next picture for me anyway, where... Um, he is attacking her with the meat cleaver. Of course, we found the meat cleaver earlier on, so that is how she died. Uh, have a look at the table here, and it's just going to be two people having a sit down. Not these people, not the unknowns, but two people that we can see taking a chill pill and having a brew. So that is that one. So heading out through the kitchen door to the left, here is the next one. And for the next one, it is actually, it's the guy carrying, now I get this one wrong, but it's basically the guy carrying the dagger knife without the candle. So it is the guy carrying the dagger knife here without the candle, okay? So just make sure, um, like I said, if you get it wrong, it's fine, you can just change it, whatever. But it is this one without the candle in his hand. So just to let you know, just so you can get a little bit ahead of me. Um, this next one, he is dragging the dead body, not a pig, not a whatever that one is, but he is dragging the body away. And then from here, we can now go into the next room. In fact, we're going to leave this one and we're going to start up the other end where the f other dead body is. So click your bingers and it's going to be... Oh, phew, that's unfortunate, isn't it? But it is going to be that one there where the uh, dagger, the circular dagger is killing him. The next one, next to the chairs, just having a cheeky little brewski right there. And again, make sure that the weapon... John, could you get the... Right, I'm going to shave that moustache and then put him on your butt here. Right, thank you. Right, so, make sure then that it is this one. It's the knife with him holding the candlestick this time. And then for the last one, it's going to be the unknown dropping the candlestick and being like, Screw that, dude! Now, because uh, you should have got everything right, um, so you can validate that one. Again, I managed to get it wrong because I accidentally got him with a candlestick. That's the one we needed with the circular dagger. Now let's validate and party. Oh, oh yeah! Enter through the back door at night, leaving mud traces in the hallway. Without being noticed, they picked up a candlestick and struck the man in the chair from behind. In the kitchen, two people were drinking tea. The workman and cook. They were startled by the noise of a falling body and went to investigate the parlour. The workman tried to subdue the intruder, but was stabbed by the attacker's knife. Judging by the wound, it was a curved blade. The cook panicked and fled back to the kitchen. The intruder followed, but since their blade was stuck in the workman, they used the meat cleaver on the table to kill her. Someone smaller arrived and discovered the carnage. They dropped the candlestick in horror and ran for safety to a room down the hallway. Meanwhile, the intruder returned to his first victim and dragged their stunned body away from the fireplace and out into the garden. You sink with that man? Oh, hell no, we got uh, quite a bit more to do. So we're heading back outside now. A bit of fresh air after all that smelly, rotten meat. Uh, have a look at the ground, and we're going to see some scratches or uh, some boot prints. 
They look like scratches on the small screen. And then just above it is some more boot prints. Damn. Left by the same person, yet they vary in depth. What do you conclude? Um, he walked differently. Right, so anyway, uh, head down slightly on this path here, just on the floor, just next to the bushes. We are going to see, there it is, that's what we're actually after. So, some more muddy boot prints, which you can interact with, and then go straight forward and interact with the roots. Sorry, there was a bit of an edit right there, but just interact with the muddy boot prints, and then head forward, and then slightly forward again. It's some more hand prints and boot prints. So, the first one there is the palm print. Next one over to the left is the boot print. Luxurious shoes. <laughs> oh, luxurious. Yeah, you can tell that. Posh gits. And then what we can do is interact with more of these small little prints. Oh, in fact, it's a finger. Jeez, I was looking at the uh, small raccoon prints right there. Uh, but there is a middle finger. So he was flipping the bird before he got it chopped off, which it's a way to go, isn't it? So there's the raccoon prints. And then over to the left is another set of boot prints. It is there, but you might have to walk a little closer to it, like me. There we go. So then from here, what we're going to do is just go straight forward, basically, onto the pier. Up here. Oh, it's, um, well, very nice here, isn't it? So interact with this little piece here, and you're going to grab uh, some silk, and then go into imagination mode and interact with the blood. Blood! And finally then, that's the investigation scene completed, so we can now make some progress. So we got two, uh, three to smash out with actually, so what happened to Davy? Well, let's deduce, shall we? So we're going to go to the uh, documents. Oh, in fact, no, we're going to observations, and it's going to be mansion crime scene, the horrors of the mansion, and the door with the horse symbol. So basically the three on the right hand side, so the door with the horse symbol, mansion crime scene, and the horrors of the mansion. Now we know what happened to Davy. Next up, we are going to go... Uh, oh, in fact, no, we're not doing anything yet. We're actually going to go and grab Davy first. Davy the Gravy the Ravy from Sheffield. All right! And then he gets the scooter tra tracks pumping. Oh, yeah, I know it was the 1880s, but still. So head over to the left rather than going straight up. So we're going to go... It's, it's a nice day. Might as well take your suit off, Cheryl. So, just keep going straight down to the left path here, basically back into the barn, where something strange happens. Oh, and my God, she tried to hang herself, which obviously we know she didn't, because she just wants to see if her brother's okay, so we just about saved her right there. So, interact with the letter on the right and her uh, face. And, uh, <laughs> well, the sheriff is a bit of a douche nozzle, isn't he, really? Yes. I fear I... To lynch an innocent woman just to send a... Then we must not dawdle. No, no. Oh, no. Miss, please. No. I... If my deductions are... Davy. Davy. Everything will... Yeah. Them gentlemen speak... Davy. Oh, come here, you... <gasps> Let me examine him, miss. I want to make sure... Remember, he may be mute, but he's... Right, so Sherlock and John save the day. Go on, boys. Right, speak to Davy, and we're going to observe him first before smashing through all the dialogue. So, what you're going to do then is interact with his eyes. Red eyes, black dragon. And then interact with his cheek. Starving and in shock, I would be as well, to be honest. Interact with his cloths. And then interact with his arm. Healing bruise. Well, that's always a better bruise, isn't it? Then interact with his pocket. Let's see what we got in there. Anything good? It's uh, nothing. Um, so, uh, kid for Davy is what we're going for. So, kid for Davy. Make sure you've chose that option. Davy seems in good health. Arneson and the others cared. I need your help. Dave. Good. The room... Yes, I think I've got it. And so once we begin, let us press start again, and we're going to pin the mansion crime scene this time. So pin the old mansion crime scene, 
And then we're good to go. Cheers, die boy. Legend, son. Legend. Right, so go back into the main living room and interact with... In fact, no, sorry, we're going upstairs. Sorry, wrong painting, wrong painting. We're going upstairs, to the left, to the left again, and going in this bedroom. And we're going to interact with the painting, which will uh, open up the way. Eventually, for some reason, I'm getting stuck on nothing. Uh, so, interact with the two. Oh, well, that's what we need, isn't it? Oh, buttons! Anyway, now we've done that one, we can now unlock it. And the code should be the same for everyone then, so it's going to be 1, 8, 6, and 2. So again, just rotate it with the right stick. So 1, 8, 6, and 2. 1862. I was alive in 1862. Right, interact with, you'll get an achievement as well for opening the safe called Open Sesame. So interact with the top box. And then interact with the bottom one to get the ring, or to get the almost ring. We're also going to be going for another quick achievement here as well, called Sticky Fingers. And no, it's not what you think. You haven't dipped your hand in delicious sweet honey chicken. Mmm, yes. So, what we are going to do is, we are going to um, go into our DNA evidence thingy. How can the painting lock be opened? And we're going to go Secret Lock. So, in observations there, so secret lock, portrait of Mr. Arneson. And then when we go right again to documents, we're going for the letter from the locksmith. So, let's go and get some sticky fingers, boys. Let's do this. Uh, anyway, we know where the secret lock is, we now have to find it, because the raccoon stole it. Right off his middle finger, as Mr. Anderson was uh, flipping the, his kidnappers the bird. So, heading out uh, once again, and we're going to go into the right hand side room this time. A few more evidence bits to grab on the table, first of all. Telegram from Ur. And then have a look at the pictures here. This should be the top right and the bottom left picture to look at. The scene is impossible, unnatural, but also familiar. Dense and disturbing notes. It's hard to follow. Once we're done here, we can interact now with the clothes on the bed. Or you can have a look at the deep grooves. There we go. Either one. Doesn't matter, it doesn't matter which order it is, but as long as you've done that one. Then we can interact with the clothes. The, clothes. By the, looks the of Near East. East. What about the Far East? Or the Middle East? Or the Up East? Or the Down East? Well, either East is good. Then move the bed and interact with this bit, and we'll just pop that secret pit open. First one, have a look at the book. There we go. Ooh, collections of notes. So you get two for that, and then interact with this little gemstone, or whatever this is, a black opal. Right, so back into the start menu then, what we need to find is animals with severed fingers. Uh, so it could be anywhere on your thing, but there we go, animals near severed fingers, sorry. So when you get that, press Y, go to class, mammals, then go down to order, carnivore, then go down to weight, uh, 10 to 50 pounds, and then press the Y button to search, and then we're going to be all like, ah, oh, bro, it's a goddamn raccoon, man, eh. Uh, so now we're going to go and get some sticky fingers, boys. Whoops, wrong one. There we go. Uh, so we're going to get, um, where is the ring? So go over to observations and make sure that we put the uh, animal near severed fingers. And go to your documents and put chapter 13 raccoons. Hello. So, once again, for the, like, fifth time of saying it, let's go and get some sticky fingers, boys. Uh, so, uh, we can pin it as well. It just makes it a little bit easier. So, we can pin that one. Now, we can head up the hallway to the left and out the back door. And then from here, what we're going to do is go down the steps, take a right. So, if we go down here and then start taking a right on this grassy sort of area. As you can see, there's the... Um, so just keep following the flowers, basically. A couple of flowers that you can follow. Then you'll be able to see some fruit and food. 
And ta-da, we've got our fingers stuck. <sniffs> Job done. Uh, so we can interact with the two as well. So the one lettuce leaf and then one of the rings, that'll be sticky fingers. And that'll be the last mis miscellaneous achievement before we can finish the chapter. Of which we are almost there. So once we've got that then, now we can head back in to the mansion. Then we're going to head all the way upstairs. There's a lot of walking in this chapter, in all fairness. So I'm surprised they haven't taken a taken a sit down yet, at least. Straight through into the big main office door. And now what we can do is go ahead and just press the A button to open up the secret door. Probably could have kicked that in yourself, but there we go. So head uh, to the right here in this big sort of wardrobe thing and interact with this book. Arneson's notes on Bank and Nashmere. Fantastic. Uh, head down and have a look at the ring. Again, you should be able to see there. My princess, my love, my heart. That's pretty cringy, bro. But it was all the rage in 1880, whatever this is. Have a look at the bottle of champagne as well. That has a fair few bottles of champagne. Do you want the rest of the champagne? Oh, God, I'm pathetic. Uh, so interact with the desk. If you know, you know. Futurama, bit of Zap Brannigan right there for you. So interact with this uh, love letter here from Arneson. My dearest Lucy, I must have you. Now interact with the photo, which shows Arneson and Lucy. Johnny is going to be gutted with that one. Then interact with a small scrap of paper here on the left-hand side. Letter from Northwood Agency to say, Hello, Arneson. You are an Arsenon. Uh, or something or other. Right, uh, I think we're pretty much done in this area now. And so now we are going to go how to learn the content of the burnt message. So let's scroll over to the observations and putting the photo of Arneson with a key. And then what we can do is go over to the uh, documents and testimonies. And then you need to put uh, the Arneson's notes on Bank and Ashmat. There it is. So Arneson's notes on Bank and Ashmat and letter from Lakoifa. Lakoifa or Lakofka. Lakofka. Sorry, I'm really blind right now. So these are the three that you need. So, where are we? Yeah, we might as well do where is Arneson currently. So let's go over to the right to the uh, to sorry documents and put love letter from Arneson and letter from Northwood Agency. So love letter from Arneson and then letter from Northwood Agency. Now we know. Davy, we know that Ash... I know that you are scared. I believe, Mr. Arneson, you are an impressive... Thank you, Davy. Bro, David the Gravy Ravy from Sheffield is smart as hell, man. Right, so, we can now head back out. The investigation scene is complete, finally. So what we can do now is just head back to Arneson's mansion, to the front, so we don't have to jog all the way around. Turn around. Oh, in fact, oh, sorry, no, wait, ignore that one. We're going to the French Quarter. Sorry, I thought that's where our dude was, but our dude is by the French Quarter. Sorry, dude. Anyway, this will end at Chapter 5, and now we're on to Chapter 6, man. Innocent slaughtered, a woman lynched, a boy forever traumatized. I fear we've crossed the Rubicon, Holmes. Davy is resilient, much like Eula. They will overcome this. You're right, but I worry this portends far worse for... In fact, no, we're not on to chapter six, man. We're going back to Lucy in The Nymph, which is just an amazingly cold brothel. Uh, I just, ah, uh, hey, get off my woman, you. Anyway, head back up to Lucy. Oh Most enlightening, thank you. Well, ain't you... I'm afraid I... How bad? It concerns your... Arneson. So, time to do some confronting. Lucy, only means... What do you imply? 
that you're in a relationship, bruh. So first one then is going to be Love Letter from Arneson. The man in this letter seemed ready to declare his feet. It's part of the job. Then the photo of Arneson with Lucy. So photo of Arneson with Lucy. This photo of you and Mr. Arneson. Looking interested when with the club. You mean to say you take pictures? If they ask not. And for the big one of which she cannot deny, it is the engagement ring. So that's the final evidence, engagement ring, and then she'll be all like, uh, uh. Oh, no. Arneson, facts are clear. You, regardless, he has been abducted. Oh, oh my Errol! What have you got? I don't know, John. This town has darkness in it. Errol had grown suspicious of Ashmat. You mean? No, n no, no. These messengers are. They're white lily. All right, Watson. I mean, Lucy, you have a. I know Johnny uh, has to remain impartial right now, but he is gutted about all the revelations right there. Uh, right, so what we could do now is head to the, uh, where we are, the top left corner there, which is the French Quarter. And then we could just go and speak to Champagne again, and now it's going to be the end of Chapter 5, because we're going in a boat. Going in a boat. Hello again, and thank you. Don't mention it, Cher. As it happens. It's almost done. That will not do. We m I won't take. Wouldn't you know it, I- Swarm the bottles. One last favor. The boat, would you kindly relay a message to the cr Of course. Okay, so, on to chapter six. Now, we are going to get another missable achievement here called uh, Brain Food for feeding yourself to an alligator. But you have to take very specific steps because it does take a while and it's still quite dark as well. So from here, what we're going to do is continue straight for the moment. Just past the two big stumpy trees. And then we're going to turn slightly right. Now you'll know if you're going in the right direction if you see like the lily pads and the flowers on it. Uh, so if you're going the wrong way, you're not seeing any lily pads and flowers. Uh, head straight. So continue going straight. And then on the left hand side, we're going to see a cart. Now these things can be kind of hard to see, but the cart is coming up. There it is. So once we have gotten here, we are going to take a left. And again, it can be kind of difficult to see here, but again, just keep, keep an eye out for those lily pads and flowers we're going over now. So take a left and just continue heading straight for a second or six. You're rowing like a professional, Watson. University of London Boat Club. Silver medalist, 1874. <laughs> And then here we're going to dive bomb and take a big right. So just take a right. Basically, you can just see the fire in the distance right there. So take a right, basically doing a sort of 360 on yourself almost. And as soon as Watson starts speaking, we're going to go to the left. Again, there's the flowers. So make sure to go to the left. Oops. Just continue on straight here. Um, it, it, it looks like I'm going to start going to the right, but it's not. Just continue going straight. Basically following the small fires in the trees. Za, za, za. Am I hearing drums? Drums in the bayou? Something swim underneath our boat. Probably just a rotten log. Did you hear that, Holmes? So after what seemingly, seemingly seems like a long time, from in this little junction here, we're going to turn to the right. Um, again, we're still following the little fires on the trees. Um, now you think there's an alligator under a boat, so we'll just kill us, but apparently not. So turn to the right, and again, just keep following the little fire lanterns.
If you told Sorry, crash like an absolute noob. But from here again, go to the left this time. Through the Louisiana Bayou. Then squall it off to the right. Again, still following the lighted torches. And then we're going to go to the left. Then we're going to nip it to the right. Almost there now, promise. The air is getting thicker, almost suffocating. The stench of death. All too familiar now. So do not get off at this pier. Continue going straight for the minute. Until we get munched on like an absolute kebab. Basically, this is just a bunch of drunks on a night out at 2am, and we are the kebab they are chasing. So, um, yep, that's how you get the brain food achievement. It does take a while, <laughs> as I said. Luckily, this is just a video game, so we're all good. Checkpoints, as I said, are very good in this game. Um, but one piece of life advice I should give you is don't go out looking for crocodiles. Unless, you know, incredibly highly skilled, like Steve Irwin, bro. So anyway, from here then, we can get back in the boat. Don't worry about the alligators now, we're all good, but we're going to make a U-turn. So just go back around, and then head to the left, and we are going to get on this pier, and we're going to make a sprint for it. Yes, but what we're actually going to do now is we're going to have to do a little bit of shooting, which literally just involves the left stick and pressing the right trigger. Very easy, otherwise we're going to be more brain food. Those poor souls. So there's the three poor souls. All you got to do is shoot the targets above them. Job done, mate. That's that's vicious. That's nature. Just a bloody expert in everything, aren't we? Right. So continue heading down the path. Don't worry. No alligators or anything in here. Nobody's gonna. Kill y'all dead, but there is a big massive camp and another investigation scene that we are going to have to do in a minute. It can get slightly confusing, in fact, in a minute, because we need to get on the mainland first. So anyway, once we get onto the next boat, just continue heading straight for the time being. In fact, I think now, in fact, yes, this is the only place we can go. So continue heading straight until we get to the next pier, and we'll get an achievement and crack on. That pier looks promising over there, Watson. We're approaching the heart of darkness. So there we go. Now we're onto the mainland. We're going to get the land ho. Excuse me. What did you call me? Um, achievement: reaching the island. So heading to the right. It's going to get start. It is starting to get dark now. So um, if you didn't put the gamma settings up earlier. Now I would highly advise to do so, uh, because it is such a dark setting, it can get slightly confusing as to sort of where I'm going and where the investigation is, etc. Anyway, once we continue heading down, here is the main land with the big old chunky fireboy. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Alright, so, yeah. It's not exactly bacon, is it? Burning flesh. So, have a look at this cage here on the right hand side. Couple of things to look at first. Um, they just, they just, they. Hmm, yeah, I wouldn't bother touching that, mate. Then have a look at the hay pile just next to it. Not very good, man. Literal animals. 
so from here, just to the right, you're going to see something on the floor here. That is just basically a heavy weight. So we'll pick that one up. Have a look at the two sticks um, at the top there. And then have a look at the axe on the left-hand side. And of course, we will interact with the axe itself. And we'll also interact with the rope just to the left of it. This is how those poor people were crucified. And directly to the left of it then, there's a pile of clothes we're going to grab. The first one, which has EA Sports. It's in the game. Unless you pay for the extra £50 DLC, then, then it's actually in the game. Otherwise, you haven't got much of a game. Which should have been the official EA slogan. Or it should be updated by now, anyway. So once those two are done, look behind you. Um, again, you're having a look at the tracks, that's all good. Now go into the sort of middle area. And then what we're going to do, if we turn directly behind us, there we go. We're looking for the body, hanging upside down and deadly chilling. Uh, have a look at this next set of ropes or whatever this is, just chilling out here. I've got to stop saying chilling. Nobody's chilling in this game, really, are they? Damn, son. So now we can press the A button and do a bit of investigation in. The first one is going to be the blood stain on the floor. So blood stain on the floor, blood stain on the floor. My eyes are blood stained, blood stained. Have a look at the right hand side of the rope. Cut nice and cleanly. Job done. That's two out of two. Job done, mate. All right, what we could do is uh, head to the left. Now we can actually interact with this guy. And then we're going to head to the back, which kind of looks like an entrance, and it will be an entrance soon. Have a look at the two on the floor, and then the one in the middle. The tracks lead behind the stone slab. Only this indentation was spared from blood. Next up, turn around, and we're going to the left-hand side. It's another little shack or something. Chilling. Stop saying chilling. Nobody's chilling. Blood was poured over someone, leaving a gruesome silhouette. Bowls filled with blood. A worn blade, but clean and without blood. And again, once we've looked at everything, turn directly around. And we're having a look just close to this, just close to the main bit there. There's going to be a rock on the ground. Uh, so we're going to have a look at the rock itself. Or the bloody handprint, as it were. Then we're going to look at the uh, footprints on the right. Thinking heels. And have a look at the scratches as well. Hand clawed at the soil. So then, now we're looking for the first cage that we... It should just be behind us there. So effectively, it's just to the left of where we were with the rock just now. Uh, so that is the first cage that we're coming into. And uh, now we're going to start doing the impressions. Or the uh, the imagination, sorry, not the impressions. So, first of all, click it up. And if you're not seeing it, it's probably because it's to the right of you. There it is. Uh, <laughs> so, that will be the correct one first. Where they're dragging him on a cross. Or dragging Anderson away, as it were. Now, head slightly left. And then just go around the corner. Into the next one. Which will just be here. And, well, it doesn't look good, does it? But we're going to find out what it was. And as it turns out, it's not that one. Uh, but it is this one. Uh, no, it's not that one. It is the this one where he is drinking some of the blood or something. Whatever he's doing. He's giving him a little drink anyway. Uh, so that is that one done. Now head over to the right, or sort of directly behind you and then to the right. Over to the indentation part. And then what they're doing to him is they're just leading him in, basically. So that is that picture there where they're just leading Arneson in. Oh, I hope we reach him in 10. And then if we go directly behind ourselves again, right to where Arneson was hanging. It's not this one where he's doing sit-ups. Might as well. <laughs> Might as well do some sit-ups. It's where the two guys are getting his ropes off. So, with that one done, we should be able to validate that now. Lovely, so validations complete. 
in this cage until his abductors tied him to a cross and dragged him to the bonfire. Arneson was left hanging here for a while before being freed and led to the altar. At the altar, Arneson's captors performed a ritual on him and poured blood over his head. With Arneson now prepared, he was escorted to the sealed entrance. They used the mechanism with an indentation to open the passage. So, once that is complete then, we are going to pin the Arneson's Path evidence. So, start of course, and then Arneson's Path. And then we will pin that one. The reason being, when we go to the, uh, the entrance, in just a little bit, we'll be able to find some new uh, things. But over to the left, just next to this cage, is a bloodied statuette, which is exactly what we needed. So, just to the left of the main entrance, that's where it was. Then you can place it in, and away we go! Darn it. Something is wrong with my lantern. Give me a minute. I won't wait for you. I'm going in. So, for this random one, head through the immediate left door first. And then just turn around. So turn directly around. And then what you're going to see is, just like in your visions from earlier on, uh, is another one of these stone statuette things. So interact with the book. And then once again, we're going in it. That's human skin. And still warm. Ah, what's happening? Oh, man, now we're Grand Theft Auto drunk. Jace, woo. Let make sure the cops don't catch you. Anyway, straight through, and once again, here we are then. Really not too far from the end of the game, in all fairness. But once again, we are going through some stuff. So turn directly to the right and head straight in. And we've got a couple of things to do right here. So first of all, go up to the right-hand side steps. And then interact with this. This is the invisible path, which I was trying to explain earlier on. And then go... So there's the one set of path, uh, which if you have a look, that's the path which you need to go. So head down the steps when you get to the left, then interact with this one, and as you can see, that goes around the cage. So, like I said, it's an invisible path. This took me three or four attempts, only because I kept messing up at the end. Uh, but let, I'll tell you exactly what, what to do and where to go, so we can head straight back through here. Uh, again, if you wanted to just have a look at the path, that's fine. Again, we're just going to walk this one, so... Walk straight, and then go towards the hand. Make sure to take a right here. The path should be big enough. And then go left of this cage. Now what you need to do, when you go left of here, don't go too close to the cage. Stick it out as sort of far left as you can, and then turn around. If you go too close to the cage, you will fall. And of course, if you go too f way too far to the left of the cage, you'll fall. So I kept messing that one up, uh, but now I don't. So, job done. Right. What we're going to do is drop down. And we're going to interact with this bit in the floor first. So, our job to get out of this hellhole is to find three symbols. So, back up the stairs, go to the right. Now, um, what you're supposed to do is go through here, press the right bumper button to see one of the symbols right here. But it doesn't matter, because even if you get too close to it, as you'll be able to see, the symbol w has now lit up. I didn't realise that first, that's why I'm going back. Um, but yeah, so even if you get close to the symbol, without even realising, um, it ba it, it, it ba it'll basically light up, which is all good. Um, so that first one is all good on the right-hand side. Now turn back, go up the left set of stairs here, um, just nip past this axe. Press the first button, and you're going to see this uh, this bell sprout dancing. Now you can just slice yourself up again. <laughs> That's still got to hurt, even in this weird um, realm thing. And that'll be the second one done. So from here, what we can do is turn back on ourselves and go up the sort of right, uh, left hand side steps, whatever you want to call them. Again, it's quite far in this one, so uh, go past this axe, and then we're going to go past the next axe as well. So sprint straight through, get through the three axes. And there is the fourth one. And that's a guy with an upside down smiley face or something. Otherwise, slice your pants off. And all three will be complete. 
yeah, to be fair, I won't be able to take any more access to the cranium either, in all fairness, Shirley boy. At last, the lantern's working again. Holmes, I'm coming. Holmes? How did you get here? How did you get through the maze? What maze? Do not lie to me, John. Sherlock. Oh, heavens. Is that Arneson? Oh, but it is Arneson, old Johnny Watson boy. So, Sherlock will just leave him there to chill for just a second. We're going to get another miscellaneous achievement here. Um, the great one. Hmm. Very delirious, as we would say. So, let us examine him first. The thing in the water we don't need to really worry about. So, have a look at the beard of Gunther Steiner's Arneson. Only Formula One fans will know that name, Gunther Steiner. He very looks, much looks like him. Have a look at his ribs. Oof, damn. Have a look at his severed fingers. Oof. And then have a look at his pocket. I'm not surprised. They've... What is this? Like, can't he just go, oh, look, do you want to join our, like, cult? It's just a god thing, rather than, I'm going to slice your fingers off and that. And What is that? Anyway, from here, have a look at the table there on the right of where Arneson was. Uh, we're going to basically interact with everything that's in the bowls. Extremely poisonous. Pokeweed berries, though they appear harmless, the whole plant is lethal. Pharmacopoeia. Listing drugs, effects, and directions for you. <laughs> Odalis. I'm gonna eat a mushroom. No, you best not if it's highly poisonous. Ha! Ah! Hey, that was a good one. Uh, right, so turn directly around and go to the next table. And then what you're going to do is interact with the vase, the bowl on the right, the vase. Visual hallucinations. <laughs> this is Dwale, induces sleep and relaxation. A gluey decoction. The smell is herby but sharp. It appears burnt, judging by the color. Right then, now, to, this is where we're going to get the bookworm achievement. So what we need to do is go to unknown decoction. De decoction? Yes. De decoction. Decoction. Ah, I, what's the word? Anyway, go to consistency, go to jelly. Make sure jelly is pinned. Then smell, go to pungent. That's what we're all like after a night out and no shower in a week. Then color, go for dark. Then press the white button to search it up. And it's that thing. Ayahuasaka. And then go to transparent liquid and do the same thing. Press the Y button on transparent liquid. Go to consistency. Go to uh, liquid. Then to smell. And put odorless. And finally to color. We are going to put uh, transparent, of course. Press the Y button to search. And that should be the snake venom. And that will also get us the bookworm achievement. So there we go. Flying through like a pig on heat. Or something or other. Uh, so, now we can do the DNA sort of bit. Very easy enough. How can Arneson be dis uh, sedated? What we're going to do is go to, obviously, observations. Put Dwale. Is that Dwale? And then Snake Venom. Dwale? Am I saying... Am I... Yeah, yeah, that'll do. Dwayek. Sorry, Jesus. Man. It's because the screen is a lot smaller on my editing screen. And my eyes at 20 to 1 in the morning are squintier than a squinty bint. Right, so pick up the vase, make sure to pick up the vase as well. And then what we can do before we fix him, we're going to go over to this side and pick up one of the snake venoms as well. Now interact with Arneson and that'll chill him out for five. I need some fresh air. Yes, please go. I'll be right behind you with Arneson. Perhaps you can prepare the boat. Free me fist down in swoop. Free eyes without purpose. And now see the ch phantoms of nothing we are free. Oh, please. I wish to re- 
Eyes with without purpose, I... Holmes? Holmes? Bon Dieu! We are, though not for lack of try. Well... He'd been telling people you died in the swamp, despite his trying to save you. Yes, but he's not- Ah... <sighs> Errol? Reckon we should give him sp- No, no- Watson, Mr. Arneson has endured a lot. Lost four fingers, a lot of blood, and some of his sack. But with rest and ten- <sighs> Thank you- Are you quite certain? I will stay with him at the mansion. It is not- His property is- Hush now. Then it's settled. Hear that, Errol? Owen oh, Champagne? I'm about sick of watching that sheriff run ro- Funny. I was just thinking that Grub did nothing. I like the- Holmes, our boat- Oh, we must make haste. Well, no, bloody old man was not lucky. Sherlock almost got stabbed square in the noggin. Luckily, uh, what's his name was on hand. What's it? What, what, what's it? John what's it was on hand to help us. Who's there? Hmm, who do you think? Let it be known that I'm handy with this revolver. Nonsense, Dr. Watt. I... I... Aren't you going to introduce us, Sherlock? Watson, meet my brother Mycroft, the Queen's best boy. In contrast, of course, to Sherlock... Do you have... <laughs> Your ego is inflated as... International trade. Oh dear, as rich as all... We need your help. What? what? It's true. The British government does not invest its resu- I know men like you. Men like you, Grease. Interesting, Sherlock. <laughs> All right. So, I beg your pardon? There is only us. I shall take the book and Davis cryptic. Oh, it's only his brother, Mywood. <laughs> Morning, Mywood. Nah, Minecraft. Minecraft games. Anyway, uh, Watson, Sherlock's pretty much losing the plot now, so we'll go into a couple of things. Again, only a very short chapter. In fact, the last two chapters are pretty short, actually, so go ahead and speak to the little boy again. Cool, no worries, mate. Then head to the right. Then head to the left. We're going to be getting another miscellaneous achievement here in just a minute. Uh, but continue on, and then we're going to go back to Mr. Barnes' excellent bookstore. So a few things we're going to do in here before the achievement will pop up. Dr. Watts it. So again, smash through all the dialogue. Last time we met, you mentioned... That's a long story. It seems to describe Pagan Arkan... Um, just the pages bearing... That's... Entity of... Oh, uh... If you can have it done at your earliest... Ki Barnes, does Stephen... Uh, what... Interesting man. What makes you say that? Ava? Say not of me. Mm. I... Please. Much obliged. Thank you. You can ask him if he seems ha you seem happy, but we don't care, sorry. Uh, we got some stuff to do. Head over to the right-hand side here, bookcase, the greatest British family elves. And one of them is definitely the royal family. No, no not the royal family, the royal family. If, you, if you're from Britain and you know your sitcoms and your comedic sitcoms, you'll know the royal family. Right, anyway, go into greatest British families. Location will be Scotland. P the period will be the 1800s. And the achievement will be um, Maritime. So Scotland, 1800s and Maritime. Which would be the Stevenson family. Fantastic. Right, uh, so what we can do, who is the cult leader and what is their goal? Or what is the cryptic message? We're going to go for the first one. First, what is the cryptic message for Asshat about? Killing Tempest article. Go to Documents. And then go over to the uh, first... Bank of the Book, and then Stevenson Family. And that'll be all done. So we're going to leave the whole cult leader stuff till after. So go ahead and speak to Barnes again. Ask him if he's got any coastal maps. Possessed. Indeed. Feats of Lighthouse. My pleasure, Doctor. Loch Harbour. Right then. All yours. You take care. Right, so head over to the left, have a look at the coastal map, but all you got to do is find the four obvious looking lighthouses and just interact with all four of them.
Now, this is where the achievement is coming into it then. When we speak to Mr. Barnes, uh, we can say, you found something. And then he's basically going to ask if he can keep the book, and we are going to say, of course. So you need to say, of course, and you will get the read it and weep achievement. So if you say, I'm sorry, no, just reload your last autosave, and you'll be able to go again. Otherwise, you can say, of course, read it and weep, job done. You take care. Mycroft, here to buy a book on f The Holmes family is be- True? More deserving of sight. I came to- Sorry, I reserve Tuesday afternoons for time with f I'm worried about Sherlock. Such gall. First you crush him under your boot. <clears throat> your emotions are impeding your rationality. Surely you jest up- The last case he pursued so doggedly was Cordona. You are not his father, Mycroft. Not anymore. He is a gro- The Crown cannot help- What is it? A confidential note tied to his case. He may see value in it. Oh, speaking of... I'm all... So then, this is a case now that we actually have to do uh, for Minecraft Head. So, uh, what we're doing, we are going to uh, now put who is the cult leader. So we're going to smash this one out. Um, go over to Documents. And then go down to the Lighthouse, the Aramadamadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadad
Well, shall we be off? Yes, of course. You can apprise me of your... So here we are in Scotland, in Amarathagis land, lighthouse. And it's very rainy, which is typical of... Whoa, okay, don't know what happened there. Which is very typical of Scotland, actually, I suppose, isn't it? It just rains and snows all the time. Uh, with a bit of sun. Uh, with a bit of sun now and again. Right, so once we've interacted with the door, head back on yourself. And head towards this light. And we can head down. Yeah, what we got? About tw yeah, about 20 minutes left now. 20 minutes left of the game. So 20 minute chapter to finish this one off. Straight through, and um, we're out of the rain for five minutes, and out of the freezing cold. So you can interact with these two here. Ouroboros. Ha! Ouroboros. That's how people who aren't from Britain try to pronounce stuff like Middlesbrough and Peterborough. Middles Ouroboros. That's, that's what it's spelt. That's pretty much what it's spelt like. So, I'll forgive you. And if anyone from outside of Britain can say Worcestershire sauce, then uh, I'll, I'll be pretty fantastic. Because Worcestershire sauce just... It's a, it's, a, it's a tongue twister, especially for those not from the UK. Right, interact with the cannon and then head down to the right. This is another achievement path, by the way. So interact with the shirt here. We basically now have to find all the evidence at this cliffside crime scene. There's a dead body uh, just to the right now. Um, and I just went past it. So let's turn around, Shirley. There we go, boy. I'm serious. Don't call me Shirley. Uh, so, that is Ash Matt's body. He's looking a bit cut up in all fairness. So, interact with his ribcage. Interact with his head. Oh, that is unfortunate, huh? Uh, interact with the knife. Ah, have a look straight at his bowels, apparently. Something was attached to the end. Oh, Jesus, I don't, know, I don't want to know what he done. Then interact with the knife. It's tied firmly to his hand. His body succumbed to all those wounds. So, remember, we've got to find everything at the cliffside. So, go up a little bit, go to the left, and then you're going to find this little pattern on the wall. These strange sigils, partially washed, drawn in blood. Go up just a little bit more, and on the right-hand side of the floor is some more blood. Blood! There we go, that one's done. Then go to the left, and just on the floor, pretty much to the left of it again, is a couple of things that we're going to find. The first thing is directly in front of us, which looks like some finger grooves. Who is fingering the floor, please? That's not what the floor is for. Have a look at the stick just to the left of it. You might have to move in a little bit. The wood is still green. Morning wood is still green, too. Right, and then have a look at the next part. Damn. Yeah, but that hurt as well, didn't they? Well, that's unfortunate. So, go up once again. No, in fact, we're almost going up once more. We have to pin Ashmat's body to get the next uh, clue. There it is on the left-hand side. Something shiny, something metallic, and something lost. Oh, what is it? It's yet another pendant or a medallion. The pedanion. So if you uh, interact with both sides, that should be enough then to get you the no stone unturned achievement. For finding all the evidence at the cliffside, uh, cliffside crime scene. So what we've got to do now is we've got three achievements left now. Uh, so three achievements, about 20 minutes, about 15 minutes left of gameplay. So now we can head straight through. Now we can head in and into the secret passageway of hell. So what we're going to do, uh, go straight ahead. We're going to interact with this little blood box thing. And then the lever to the right of it. Dried blood. Oh, I get it. We need fresh blood. And no, I'm not volunteering. Fear not. I think Ashmas can help. So, why not in a dangerous room go and have a look at the other dangerous room? Uh, well, not just yet. We have to go back outside and grab some fresh blood from Ashat's body. Sorry, I'll call him Ashmat now that he has uh, passed away. Rather stabbily. Do you have anything to hold blood, Watson? Fine, take my flask.
The lever doesn't want to stay on its own. Watson, hold the lever for me. I must investigate. Okay, so now we can go inside the other room. Uh, right, so head to the right this time. And hello. Yahtzee. Ding, 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 ding. Right, interact with this lever, and that's just going to make everything worse. The doors, Watson. Hold the doors. Ah! We're trapped. Now what? Look around. Uh, Watson, this isn't the time for your lever to be shooting up. Oh, that lever. Right, okay, never mind. Right, interact with this, and then we're going to get a bit of shaky-shaky and head back to the old homie Sherlock. And Watson has just done us over, so thank you very much, douche nozzle. So what we can do is interact with this sort of uh, locking mechanism. And then what's going to happen is, now what you can do is pretty much press... The, if you press the left bumper, you'll be able to see, like, little sticks on the ground. Uh, so here's the first one just to the left of it. There's another one to the right of this. Uh, so if we just turn around, again, press the left bumper here, and you'll be able to see all the hot spots and where all the sticks are. So there is those two. And then what you're going to do is go to the next mechanism piece and pop the two of them in there. So that's the two of them done. There's another stick just to the left there, and if we go forward a little bit, over the next one, there's the next one. So we can pop them both in uh, the this mechanism. Straight in front of us is going to be another one. And then if we go off, go off to the right, you can already see the next one on the ground. Pop those two in the next mechanism. Ba -bom. And then if we turn around again, oh, in fact, there's the, another stick. And then if we turn around, another stick is just going to be on the ground. There is a few more, uh, as you can see, just on the floor. So there's quite a few more if you need to grab some. So you'll never be able to miss this section. Grab those two. That pops that one over. And spank you very much, John Watsit. We are all good. Be ready for anything, Watson. Will do, Brev. Oh, it's a box. Ah, thank God for debt. It's all right, Watson. It's merely a chest with coins and a dagger, made of obsidian by the looks of it. All right, so we got some coins. Happy days. What we're going to do then is go back into this section here. We're going to. Uh, interact with the bowl. That'll get Watson on our case. And then what we can do, uh, it's not over here. I basically just took the long way around. But there's basically what looks like an ice hockey table there. Uh, we're not interacting with this side. But we are going to interact with the other side. It's a weights table, it is. More than an ice hockey table. I mean, if you're waiting for death, an ice hockey table would have been fun. Uh, so go back over to the bowl. And we can pick up some of the ancient coins. Pop them in, and that's a job done. Raid a tomb without destroying it. Terrific. Now, onward before they close again. Let us hope our paths converge. So this is the section I was talking about then. So what we can do is call Sherlock, because he's fallen to his almost death. Um, but we have to take a set of underground caves. So if you ever get stuck... It's easy, as you can see there, so the big blue bit of whatever that was there, like a big puff of something. So, press the right bumper to call Sherlock if you get stuck. Um, but I'll pretty much just tell you which way to go anyway. So here, what you can do, just press the right bumper here, and it's going to be going to the, the left. And then from here, what we can do is we're going to head to the right. Please, John. Please, John. I didn't mean to make that joke about your lever. Uh, so again, it's going to be coming from the left. There it is. So again, if you keep getting stuck, just keep pressing the right bumper uh, to sh uh, call him. But we're going straight. <clears throat> and then... Oh, just stop falling at everything. Keep right, from this one, we are going to be heading to the... Oh, in fact, it's, it's we need to go to the right. See the little frog statue thing, or whatever the hell that is? It's the very right-hand side. There it is. So there's that one. And then when we get to the next part. Uh, eventually. Eventually. I'm coming. Okay, we are basically going to keep going to the left now. So go to the very left. Eh, stop jumping. Eh. And I think we've made it. Have we made it? We've made it. Come here, Bert. Holmes. Holmes, come on. Wait. Uh, thank heavens. What? The 
moment. Stop. Sherlock. Nothing is everything. I... You asked that I int... With, with every passing minute, another... Ah, oh, Sherlock, you almost died. Do not worry about me. See, bitch? Ah, not a problem. Sherlock's all good. John Watts it is all good. Right, when we go into this room, make sure to interact with this desk here. Uh, I don't know if, what happens when you interact with the person, but interact with this uh, note is the Lighthouse Keeper Diary. We need to find two of these to get the Up in Flames achievement. So that's the first one there, and then just interact with the key. That'll be all good. Getting closer to the end now. I'll give you La La now. Yeah, yeah. Not a horse, mate. A uh, couple of beds, a couple of rats and everything. So, this is um, one sort of crystal thing that we're going to look at. Mad, isn't it? What the hell's going on, man? And then if we go over to the left, just behind everyone. We can now interact with this. Uh, yes, so that's what we're going to do. Yes, I do, John. Screw you, buddy. Anyway, head through and then down the steps. We're going to find this second table here. So interact with the note, which is going to be the warning to Ashmat from Ur. And then we're going to interact with this little blade right in front of us as well. Black and metallic. That's my favorite kind of coffee. Uh, interact with the big green thing. And then interact with the outside world. Effort to break like that. So, time to do some DNA, boy. Right, now we're going to do how to interrupt the hypnosis thing. First of all, it's going to be the obsidian dagger. So, go back there, just make sure to choose the obsidian dagger. Go over to the right once, and then we're going to choose the strange device with beams. I generally thought I said beans first, which I was looking out for beans, but it's not that. The entranced people. And if we go over again, it's the warning to Ashmat from Ur. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So head back up the stairs. We're going to interact with this first beam first. All it is is just rotating it. So rotate it until the beam goes... Uh, green, yellow or orange, whatever colour that decides to be. Again, my eyes are a bit prickly with the colours. Chuck it over to the big uh, strange device. And then just uh, interact with it and that you'll smash it down. That's it! You did it! John, the worshippers, we need... Of course, I'll see if... At least this awful mask is breathable. Her chest is moving fast. She's hyperventilating. Check her pulse, can you, Watson? As expected, the pulse is elevated, but within normal limits. Stop there, shipmates! Filthy, sweat-covered face to a name. So, after all this time, we finally found Dirty Summers. And... Do you know what's going to happen? It's a kablamo to the nugget. <laughs> and look here. You killed him. So, into the next room now that, uh, well... He's not dirty anymore. Straight into this next room, and this is where we're going to get the Up in Flames achievement. So, have a look at this... Board of things first. There's two things on the board which you're going to look at. This book. And there's going to be something like a letter on the left as well. They modify the gallery and watch room. It seems they have placed beam emitters all over the main gallery. Khalid lenses are placed inside the lantern room. One moment, Watson. I'll redraw this blueprint. So after that's done, what we're going to do, turn to the left, have a look at this box of hay. Hey, hey, hey. Have a look at this book on the right, and that is the one, the Lighthouse Keeper Diary of April the 4th. That is going to get you the Up in Flames achievement. Now, the last two achievements are basically just for finishing the game, so let's do it. 
So interact with the big plaque or whatever that is, then interact with the hay. Padding. They didn't want their cargo damaged. Right, so from here we're going to turn to the left, not by his dirty bed, but we're grabbing Dirty Summer's diary, and then what we're going to do is go into our DNA thing one more time. I believe it's the last time. Right, how to stop the ritual? Well, let's find out, shall we? Right, first of all, it's going to be the obsidian dagger, of course. And then if we go right to the observations, it's going to be the Khalid lenses, Khalid lenses weakness. And then if we go to the documents, we are going to go for uh, the uh, the blueprint. There it is, the blueprint on the left, the lighthouse lantern blueprint. Sorry, almost forgot myself then. Anyway, once that is done, we've got the sabotage plan, and now we're going to put the plan into action. All right, good. If our future is black, come on. Right, so this is the final section of the game. It does take about five or six sort of minutes. Stop. What should we do? We get answers. Sherlock. Sherlock! Mr. Holmes. You ex... We've stood here before, Mr. Holmes. What? Join me. So, just to know, if you end up dying for whatever reason, every time you destroy one of these uh, lenses, um, you will auto-save. So if you die, you will start from that particular auto-save. From the uh, last one. So it auto-saves after every single time you smash one. Anyway, go over to the uh, crystal on the, very, uh, on the beam on the very left-hand side and put this one right in the way right there. So that's the first one. Go over to the next one on the right. Now you'd think you'd be able to just go all the way over to the left, but no. Just put it over to the left, just to the right of that pole. And then what you can do, that incredibly smashes that one open so we can get this one out of the way already. Now like I said, there is an auto save now because you've smashed this one. So if you do die, you'll start from this section again. No. Out every fiber of the bile. I see moon. You are delusional. Bah! You are mad. Are you really one to... Something... But... Hi, hello. Okay, here we go again. So, in this section, there's going to be... Uh, basically, we have to go through crowds, and it's a random quick time event section. So, keep your eyes and your ears peeled, because it's going to be random. They're going to start doing a mosh, like they're in an absolute slipknot mosh pit. So, just try to ignore them. And then it'll go, and then once you when you get when you get the quick time event right, they'll stop moshing for five. So once you get to the other side here, then what we can do is just nip all the way over here, interact with this pole because uh, it's completely broken. Nah, that's a shame, isn't it? Okay, well let's go over to the left, all the very way over to the left hand side. Something's missing. Well, isn't this handy now? So now we can go all the way back to the right and interact with the broken one again. And then go all the way back to the left again, and then we can swap that one out, and that'll work fine, just fine. So, interact with this one, move it over to the left ever so slightly until it's hitting the, uh, the lens. And now what we have to do is go back, oh, well, almost back through. Uh, what we need to do is interact with this little mirror thing first, and just move that over to the left, like that. And then what we're going to do now is interact with this right-hand side, or the one just by the mirror that we found. And then we're going to actually move this over to the boxes to the right. So sort of just in the middle, just to the right of the top of the box right there. And then interact with this lens. There we go. And we're just going to move this over to this, uh, or just to the left of the mirror. And now we have to go back through. So remember, it's a random quick time event, so keep them peeled. Right, there we go, we got there in the end, didn't we? So now we can go all the way around and smash this one. Yeah, boy, two left. Oh, yeah. But what? Oh, 
What is the... They are just two... Oh, all-seeing master. You use them for... I've seen a map. Galaxy swallow... You know not cruel... This is you, Brister. No, no. He burned, Rogers. And were you to... Surely you understand. I... I'm a... There is no such thing as sanity! It's incredible that Watson really is just taking his time and chilling out while doing all this, isn't it, really? <laughs> but, uh, so, from here, we're gonna have to do a quick time event again. Man, you guys stink! Right, so, interact with this, uh, no, not this laser beam, but the next one, just by the boxes. Well, just after we move the mirror, sorry. So we're gonna, in fact, no, we're not even moving the mirror. We're keeping the mirror where it is. We're moving the one by the boxes. Very sorry about that one. And then we're going to use it to, uh, you, uh, to hit that beam with. Um, and we're gonna have to go through another quick time event. Where are these people coming from, bruh? Right, interact with the first one that we come across, pop that one over to the, again, just make sure the beam is at its fullest, um, lightiest, uh, back through the crowd of smelly people. It's like being in town on a Saturday morning, isn't it? Only nothingness. It's preposterous. Oh, you're one of my cross agents. Yes, I am dreaming in the asylum. You are standing. You. The cycle repeats. Oh, it is, it is undead. It... When you have eliminated all which is now, Holmes. It's. Right, come on, lads. Let's do this last one, lads and ladiettes. Back through the crowd, should we just, uh, what should we do? Can't beat a bit of every time I die to Mosh 2, can you? On top of a big massive tower thing. Uh, why will it all fall to our deaths? Right, uh, pop this beam right on the mirror right there. Again, make sure that it is uh, lit up yellow, orange, or green, or whatever the hell that color that is. Again, slightly colorblind. Yes, hilarious. Hit it with the other mirror. That'll do it. Bam, slam. Yes! Yeah. Maybe your god is unstoppable, but. What do you mean? I have made a friend. No! Curse you! It is over. I thought this time would be... Sherlock! Come back! Come with us! The Abyss calls for me, Mr... Sherlock! Rochester, don't! Such heights! No! God! I have to see it! And there it is then, guys and gals. The last two achievements should now hopefully unlock for you the Fdragon achievement for stopping the ritual and the reawakened achievement for collecting all achievements as well. So hopefully, I know in a lot of games uh, that particular one for collecting all achievements doesn't seem to unlock. Hopefully it does for you. 
And there we go, guys and gals. That is 20 out of 28 there. And that was Sherlock Holmes, The Awakened. Uh, so thank you so, so much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed the game. Um, now again, I mean, I mean, for the price tag, it's, it is kind of a short game, even though the chat does seem long. But anyway, hopefully there's a sale soon, or hopefully we can get some game pass on this, boy. Uh, but thank you so much for watching again. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the game. I hope you enjoyed the guide and that it helped as well. If it did, of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend. Big shout out to my YouTube members and all my Patreon supporters as well. Uh, your support means literally the world. So thank you so much again. I shall see you in the next one, guys and gals. Big old Loveberg.